We have two new guests on this episode of the podcast, both Northeast natives based out of Gloucester. You've probably seen them on the TV show Wicked Tuna, the fish aboard, the fishing vessel tuna.com. Both great friends of ours, our peers. We spend a lot of time with these guys out on the water and, um, and they're just awesome dudes to talk to. We nerded out a ton um, on giant bluefin tuna fishing. We talk a little bit about skiing and winter work, largemouth bass fishing, ton of sea stories, charter fishing stories, fishing theories. Talk about a few scary experiences that we've all had um, out offshore. It was a really good conversation. If you tuna fish up in the Northeast, I think you'll get a lot out of this. And, um, and you'll definitely get a, a lot of laughs out of this as well. So without further ado, please welcome to the podcast, Captain Sandro Maniasi and Captain Jordy Souza of the fishing vessel tuna.com. Welcome to the Sea Bros Fishing Podcast, where we follow three words of wisdom. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. Am I coming off or what? Get that down. Don't get on that rock right here. I went and got a haircut, and then I didn't realize what time it was, and all of a sudden I was like, fuck. So do you guys do like two haircuts a year? Because that's what I do. I do one like right before the season, and then... Yeah. Uh, now, every three weeks. Yeah, he's... He, oh, you're, you're tight, he and Dave around. Yeah, I mean, mine was just like this a minute ago. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah my, beard, my beard, too, in the winter, my, my beard goes out. Dude, I wish I could grow a beard. <laughs> our, our other mate, Ben, he and I basically grow out all facial hair unless we get a grander or the season's over. So by the end of the year, it's like disgusting. Typically, but we got to kill a grander. Yeah, we can't release one. So, ooh, yeah, harder. it's tricky. Getting harder. I know. Become a lot more easy <laughs> catch and release. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's for sure. I think we're good. Cool. How was, how was ski season? Uh, it was good. It was the winter was not so that what exciting. Do you do? So I coached ski racing. Yeah, which I ski raced. Since I was like seven or eight, little kid, all the way through college. Yeah. And then started coaching right after school. Been coaching for 10 years now. Wow. Spent five winters in Tahoe coaching out there. Or it's been I 10 co- years you've been coaching? <clears throat> yeah, I've been started yeah, coaching in 2013. Wow. So you start that in what, like end of November? Yeah, like middle of November. Are you sad you missed December tuna fishing? Yeah, because he always text me pictures. he strokes he always texts me pictures on december 1st inevitably i'm stuck <laughs> on a chairlift in colorado somewhere <laughs> actually december was it december 1st or 2nd it wasn't it was not the first day was gnarly it was shitty was it yeah, like, it was super was shitty was it like october 2nd no it wasn't that bad <laughs> wasn't yeah that bad. december was was cool so much fun. i fished two days and then got covid and dave got covid and connor got covid Pretty much everyone got COVID. I didn't get it. Yeah, Ryan he, didn't get our it. Our whole Florida family, Florida trip got. Oh really? Dude, fucked like up. Like literally two that. days before, every, our whole family got COVID. And like no. half the family went to Florida. It sucked. No. Yeah. That sucks. You didn't go on the dot com though. No, I yeah. fished with Jeff. Right. Yeah, they pillaged. It was fun. Yeah. We I only needed Jeff. one bait to catch a tuna. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyways. We chummed our last one up. Nah, it's sick. Jeff won't admit to that, but we 100% got yeah. it to chum. So we got some savage rapid fire questions for you guys. So I don't know if you've listened to any of these, but we t- yeah, yeah, I was telling Brian, we I typically. Because I groom too, drive snow cats. So oh, I cool. listen, listen to him in the cat at night. Perfect. Yeah. That's one thing I've always wanted to do. It's awesome. I've never been in a snow. It's cool machine. <clears throat> it is awesome. Like a machine. They're so fun. Yeah. Cool machine. And like on night, like when you when the snow's good, like after a storm or something, you can just you know do hog piles of snow around ten feet high, push it with you. So cool. That's awesome. That one it's I like think. satisfying too. You know, it's like a zen, it's like your one big Zen garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
Have you ever fallen asleep in the middle of the night one of those machines? You fall no. off the edge. Yeah. You know <laughs> the edge? Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, you don't, because you're, like, so hands-on and, like, you're paying attention to what you're doing. It's like yeah. it's like playing a video game. There's You're not just, like, cruising around. So Sick. it's like both hands are doing shit all the time. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, they're fine. I've been doing that for a few years. Have you? Do you ski at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate snow. Do you? Are you still looking at a largemouth bass fishing? Oh, I'm starting Wednesday. You start Wednesday? Dude, I looked at pictures warm. from last year. And yeah. I thought I started around this time. It's like end of March I started. I was like, wow, I'm slacking. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like last year everybody tried fishing for something earlier than this year. Yeah. Like you, you started shad fishing like a little too early. I think we're going to try right this week. Now. That looks fun. Dude, it's fun. You like That it. looks fun. That's you good. guys would have a blast. Like baby tarpon. Yeah. Baby they tarpon. Are. It's a good social event. Yeah, it is, you for know? sure. And you like you might catch one. It's you basically just casting and like. Right. Yeah. I still haven't really. I still haven't successfully caught like one. I've caught six to eight of them. Six, right? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good up in the the Merrimack River, up like way up inside. Oh really? Yeah. Like the the French boys go up there. Oh no shit. Yeah. yeah I've never yeah, fished from anywhere cool. else. For for us, we can't really catch them during the. Oh, you probably can during the day. We just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. So now we kind of catch them in the mouth but it's more like flossing it's like right. catching salmon when you're like dragging it in front of their face right it's cool though it's like a foot of water and then you just watch them v wake up and you're basically just okay. like hammering every v wake that you see <clears throat> yeah and then when you're on it's like i'd say half of the it's fight. All light tackle too it's all like 12 yeah, like pound braid 10 pound fluoro 15 pound fluorocarbon little shad darts we've been experimenting with like double hooks like basically how to snag them the best way <laughs> yeah right yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But it's sweet. I mean, you eat pokey snackers. Probably full speed, that. like, well, full speed in your waders running down the river. Really? And the thing's like yeah. jumping Tripping into over trees. Rocks and really? Shit. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot of fun. They air out? They yeah, air out. They do kind of jump. But they, they do jump, right? Yeah. They kind of like come back out of the water and they do like a little, yeah. a little shimmer, a little shimmy. A little shimmy shimmy. A little sham wow. The snapping turtles are pretty scary in there, though. I see them oh, all the time. Like, yeah. Old OG, OG has a story. He used to be like a shad nut back in the day. He was like the <laughs> shad guy, which, of course. Yeah, right. I can see him sitting in the back of the butt. <laughs> yeah, right. Ripping a butt. Like, uh, what's the casting, the sh- what casting Bob, a butt? the garbage man, that like striped bass dude? Oh, Have you yeah. seen the videos of him? That's how I picture OG is. Uh, Oh, yeah. As a shad fisherman, but he has a story. He's like, "Oh yeah, I went down, you know, hung my lantern up on a lay down, and stepped up on this rock and hung my lantern on a lay down, and then we fished all night, and then I went back to get my lantern, and the rock wasn't there anymore." <laughs> <laughs> and sure as shit, like last yeah. year, we saw some really big snapping turtles in there. That's cool though. Yeah, I see them all the time. They're nasty. Oh, they are. So you guys ready to get covered in haddock doo doo? Right around the corner. Can't wait. My so you guys favorite. start the eighteenth. I saw something well, scheduled for the 18th, but Dave just told me like the 21st, 22nd. So yeah, is haddock fishing other haddock out there right now? Yeah, you know one of our buddies was out the other day. I guess it, I guess it was all right. Yeah, but no one's really. It's always like kind of rooted around too much. I feel like in April. Uh not not used to. I mean, it used yeah, to be. Yeah, well, you guys. It's yeah, sick, it used right? to be good. You get limits real quick, but now either it's, they're they're not there anymore. Or the cod are brutal. Yeah, like even I mean brutal. even all last haddock season. Cod what were we? The cod were brutal last year. The cod were like dogfish. Ugh. You know, like they were annoying because they're just that a nuisance. Horrible. But even last year, we only had I think we only had one one or two limits the whole month of May. We had one limit. Yeah. It was def- last year was definitely a little slower, but I mean, there's still plenty there, but just not. We got spoiled for a while. Yeah. You got to grind now. I'm not used to grinding. <clears throat> Used to go out there like fish for an hour and a yeah. half, two hours, drop, get, get close to your limit, and then just start calling out the small ones, yeah. all the small ones back. Just keep all. I mean, it's good ones. for the char to be bending the rod like all day, right? But yeah, you're catching stuff, but right. they get you're just picking away. Yeah, they get annoyed now with the cod. Yeah, which is now hilarious. You, you're not pulling up like these little. You're pulling up like nice market cod. They were, yeah, yeah, they were they nice cod caught. too. Yeah. They were not dank cod. They were markets and larges. I'm gonna let all that shit go. Slash, watch it get picked away by seagulls when you let it go. God. Know. Luckily, most of it goes down, but no, it still, does. it's... It's pretty shallow water. Yeah. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah, we what? don't really start until May for us, just because they don't... Instead of running 25 miles, we just kind of wait for them to come into, like, 7. Yeah. And we start our trips. Yeah, usually the first good few... May. First few are really good. Yeah. You know? For, like, a week, it's it's savage off Green Harbor. 
and then they and we started had a little moving, bit like, of a north. lull, and then we started fishing off Boston. Yeah, and then we bass, started then sure. bass fishing. I'm so jealous of you guys bass fishery. Oh, it's the best. I'm so nice. jealous. The rivers, the oh, is, is awesome. Dude, we should come down some night and dude make these guys take us like when they're bass on their you know, Jurassic Park and the river. First there. week of June. I mean, end of May. End, end of May. Of, end of May. Have an early outgoing <clears throat> tide is like like half outgoing in the morning. That's yep. when they're usually eating all the herrings on the surface, and it's fucking sick like pushing yeah. them all up into those that's little fun. creeks that's, like yeah. blowing light, them up into the marsh freshwater gear yeah that's fun and this jumbo is mixed in with the small ones yeah last year was insane with like keeper fish you know it's probably like 50 50 in the river which is insane for us yeah. any big big ones like 30 plus pounders he got one 44 45 yeah. inches so like 20, 25 25 pounds 27 pounds something like that but that's huge for there oh yeah you know any river someone gets one of those 50 pounders every year yeah. early season yeah and we've all had that encounter taylor and i had we've one try them. to eat another bass yeah pritch had one try to eat another you bass. had one eat a shad and got had spooled. one eat a shad and got spooled well i got broke off but we were yeah. a string no way yeah wow hickory shad caught a hickory shad on a chunk at slack come time. on i kid you not pinned him on through the nose and just sent them behind our two drift baits the thing got smoked. Then I was like two turns down the river on the knot and broke them off. Wow. Yeah. Have you guys ever caught a tuna on a shad? Or mm. heard of anybody catching a tuna on a shad? No. Nope. Still haven't seen them in its belly either. We were just talking. We actually talked about this a little they bit. Did? Yeah. yeah. I, got here. Yeah. I know guys have tried. Yeah. I mean, it looks good. It looks amazing. He was also we were also saying I've never caught one on a saw belly, and he thinks that they're too fast. Like they're too Didn't you catch one on a saw belly? You caught a small one. Small. That's what I've I said. heard you guys catching like small 45, 50 oh, inches on, yeah. on river herring. but Like on the migration out well, southeast corner, you caught one. We've one. never used one. river herring. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. No, I would never no. imagine to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you got for the first rapid fire question? Have you guys ever been mid dump and had the rod go off? Yes. And tell me your story. If yes. It's a good story. I was on, I was running the Emma Drew. I was fishing with Custler, who work, fishes with Bob now. Yeah. He was down below sleeping and I was on the back deck sitting on a bucket. And I'm sitting there and I watched the far floater swing around or the close floater swings around and bends. And I was like, <laughs> John. And then by the time I yelled, the, he had like pulled the hook. It could be like it was like an instant. Hook hole. Like, I was like, man, I like just sat like, down, like ready, watched yeah. this whole thing happen, and I was like, uh, I'm a better. Did you say I was like, you gotta be shitting. No, <laughs> uh, it was like it's meant to be. Just pop. He's like, he wasn't ready yet. <laughs> That's amazing. The most helpless I've ever felt in my entire life. <laughs> Easily. How about you? No, well, I thought so. Down in North Carolina. Yeah. Rigger popped, and uh, Dave's yelling, "We're on, we're on." Yeah. Run out back. It was a Mako. <laughs> and that was it. So that's, that's all crazy out of all the years that you guys have fished. You haven't had, oh, you've had it happen what, once? Yeah, once. What about taking a leak off the transom and having the down rod go off next to you? Oh, I've had those. Think rods about that all the time. Have you? Oh, yeah. So you've had a swing, but have you had the down rod go off? Think hard. It's a lot of tunas to go through. <laughs> There's a lot of tunas to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Dude, his head's going to start yeah, smoking. Weber, Weber I, hasn't either. I think about it every day. Down yeah. rod? I don't think so. Floaters, yes. Yeah, floaters, yeah. Kind of just finish the piss and just like just keep watching it. Make sure it stays <laughs> yeah. there. Right? Yeah. Like a, just, just push it off the transom with one hand. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Uh, uh, that's funny. Yep. That's good. You had one, though. Weren't were we down like fishing hot reels, like hump there? Oh, yeah, that's right. Charlie was right there. Yeah, that's right. And you yelled, I think I was sleeping, and you were yelling. Yeah, Ron. that's right. And you were like, why didn't you get it? I was like, busy. <laughs> <laughs> How was your guys' season overall? Like, scale to 1 to 10? Like, fishing mm -hmm. in general? Last year, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Last summer was tough. We did all right. Like, September, October, we did okay. Yeah, I mean, the fall's much easier, obviously. Right. You know, but uh, I don't know. We didn't... We didn't do great. We started off pretty good in June. Right. Obviously, on the southwest corner. You know, yeah. it's our jam. I love that place. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't know. We kind of looked at it like a little lull there. Yeah. As soon as that kind of slowed up and, you know, it's kind of grinded. But then we ended up having to go yeah, to the Cape, up. which sucked. Yeah. Awful. It's such a long drive for you guys. It's just, I don't know. It's just 90, 90 I mean, it's miles, 90 miles there. to start. 
Yeah. And if you start yeah. chasing whales and shit to the southeast, yeah. is it one as day good I know we caught our fish saying? for we never went down there. from home. You, I can't believe you guys like, haven't gone down. I mean, it's 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 pretty epic. Don't get me wrong, but it's just it's far. You'll mark the whole quota in one even drift. Far for us. In one drift, you're on the pile. You'll you'll mark the whole quota in one drift. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's sick. Even when you, even when they stop piling in there, you you like you hook one, catch them, just driving just to get out of there. Yeah, it's just like the bottom's like this. You like what like the spaghetti. Hell? It's, it's, crazy. it's crazy, you know, but I don't know. I don't like that place very much. I like it, but I don't. <laughs> we just can't yeah. with charters and yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. And that's the only reason why we can go down there is because of filming. Yeah. Other than right. that, we never go. go down there. Yeah. No way. What's your favorite spot to fish? Ah. <laughs> uh, hmm. General area to fish. He gets, dude, he's on <laughs> fucking TV. He can say whatever he wants. What's his favorite spot to fish? I, I mean, you guys know my personal favorite, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yep. southern end there. And but I mean, it's it used to be the flag. Yeah, but we kind of just stopped going there because yep. that just got too tight. Just too many it's, boats. Yeah, a small piece of bottom. It's a tiny piece of bottom. How yeah, many boats? How there. many boats could fish there, and it would still be a productive spot up there? Like max fleet and the still be flag? productive. Twenty. It, I mean, it depends, you know, it's... It depends it on who's there. It hasn't been, like, lights yeah. out, but there's been a lot of fish running through there, but it hasn't been, like, lights out. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird. You hear these guys marking a pile of fish, but they're just not chewing. Hmm. You know, you wonder if they're going inside the bay, eating at night, you know, eating Sounds posies like or whatever. Corner. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, then shooting out and just looking at your stuff and right. before they go back in there. You might pick off one or two early, and then, you know, other than that, you just kind of sit there, watch the machine, just watch them streak on you. Yeah, yeah. you down, Rob. No, the flag but, was fun for a while there, but we just, we haven't really, I mean, I'm sure it's been okay, but we haven't really gone. I love Platts when we used to go up there. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Platts is sweet. Those are not stupid ocean fish. You know, they're just like the Cape. Right. You, know, you, get, you can have like the, like the slime was so bad there. You know, even with all the slime and the line, the rod was still, still banging. The line, I mean, the line literally looked like this microphone yeah. cord. <laughs> 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 but, bright, but bright red. Bright red. <laughs> so they can really see You'd it. You'd be like, yep, we're on. But you mark them like, you, you know, especially that place is like sundown. Yeah. So like when the sun gets low, like, you know, evening time, like July. So you're like 7.30, 8.30 at night. And you you, know, you start marking packs in there. And like if you mark, you're probably going to, they're, they're going to bite. What do you think it is about up north that... It's like seems like it's way easier to catch them at night. We talk about this all the time. Yeah, we've we've had this discussion at nauseum, and there's really last year don't know. was the first year I've heard of guys hooking them on the northwest corner in the dark. Yeah, and they were coming through there in the dark all season or just December. Uh, I know. I, think that, it was, I mean, we had the bites fall. in the dark. It was yeah. the fall. Later in the fall. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think October. Like October. Mm -hmm. You know, Kyle was out there. Right. Um, he had a couple bites in the dark. I know other guys had bites in the dark. But that's like, yeah. you don't see that. Weird. I think they had rumors of a guy hooking him at night on the middle on Middle Bank. Yeah, a couple of years ago. But well, that one guy hooked up at like two in the morning on Middle Bank next to us. Yeah, that's but not... it makes no sense because there's so much bait there in the dark. It's like right. it's sick. It's sickening how much bait is there. It's sick, and it just like it's just top to bottom, and there's no like movement. It's the no, weirdest it's really thing. Weird. Like there's no predators. Right, it's very right. Weird. It's not like you know? wavy or walling yeah. off. Like it's you know, yeah. even the whole night. Nope. As soon as you get up to Jeffries, you start hooking them in the dark. It's so crazy. You wonder if they like they go up there. PEI, you can hook as much. Canada in general, they'll bite yeah. all throughout the night. Right. Really? Yeah. But you wonder if like our fish in general move north. Like I know it's kind of far, but it's really not that far for them to swim. Like it's right. It's two to three hours. Like you wonder if they go up there and they like chase squid around and shit, and then they yeah. come back down. I don't know, I'm not a tuna. So I Dude, know. I just wish I was a tuna, you know? Sometimes. I like talking about this stuff, though. I'm going to switch it up. Perfect. Pet peeves on a boat. For it with a Do charter you, or just in general? In general. Yeah. Biggest pet chewing peeve. Chewing with your mouth open. Oh, <laughs> not me. No, not no, me. because we're both sharing the same thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, that's unreal. Oh, How about you? Yeah. Same. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I really don't get annoyed by too much out there. You know, it's. I mean, doing the charts and stuff like that. You got to be patient. You know, yeah, it's a yeah. of the people. One thing that does drive me crazy is the, just kind of trust what we're doing. We're out right. here doing this for a living. So if you want to move, you know, it's get off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> get off the, yeah, literally. Like we know when they're gonna come through for the most part. You know, yeah. we know what we have to do, and you yeah. know, it's yeah. like one guy last year, like. We had one across the machine the whole time. We hooked like five of them. 
hook like five fish. Like they're small fish, so. Yeah. And uh, I think there was like one, a pack came through and they didn't bite. He's like, can we move? Yeah, he goes, so, so what are we going to do? Are we going to try somewhere else? We were like, are you all right, yeah. bro? <laughs> you it's know like what's going on here, right? Part. We've been marking for half an That's hour. That's the thing. It's like, just, you know, just let us do what we do. You know, yeah, it's our yeah. job. You know, it's, other than that, it's, you know, got to be patient. Yeah. What would you say the percentage of your customers that have absolutely like no idea what's going on versus people that are return customers slash kind of know Fish what to expect? Bit. Yeah. I mean, we have a ton of return customers. No right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them, you know, never done it before, you know, regardless if it's had a Katuna, but yeah. it usually takes like one try for the most, especially on like the catch and release days where, you know, you have a good shot of hooking one. They can yeah. figure out what to do, you know? I mean, we've had girls on the boat yeah. winding, you know, six, 700 pounders you know, yeah. all by themselves. Like one we had last year. I feel like girls are way better at fighting fish than boys. They listen. They, 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 they listen. Yeah. They, they yeah. listen yeah. and they're finesse and they're not trying to like... <clears throat> You know, rip the thing's face off. Right. Like, yeah. The thing's like screaming at like 50 pounds of <laughs> dragon. Like, it's like, hold on. Like, you can't hold that, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like tie a rope to your truck and, you know, hold on to it. See if you can stop the truck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not stopping it, you know. But they listen. You know, girls listen, but. You know. Not too many pet peeves. No. Mine's trail mix. Don't bring that shit on the boat. Because it ends up like in all crevices and all the gutters for the hatches yeah like yeah we can't even drain the water out the scuppers because it's so much yeah. trail mix yeah. typically and flush multiple times yeah i feel Not like just i feel like i give uh, yeah. i give the most detailed instructions on how to use yes. the head right? yes and it's still like this is what i hear for flush <laughs> <laughs> No, hold that. You, just, you just got the tip of that turd down. <laughs> <laughs> that, is all, that is all that just happened there. Uh, you know? Yeah, we have like a, a the grinder one that you got to push and hold. Yeah, on. yeah. just keep right. holding, yeah, keep yeah. on holding for like even after you think it's gone. Yeah, yeah. it's like, and you're like, well, it's halfway into the grind. <laughs> That's probably we the have ours. Like it, it cycles on itself. It's so, like you flick the switch once and it drains and fills and drains and fills. Yeah. yeah. But even still, keep it running. <laughs> you can put some. Bad. You can put some water through that system. Get that thing moving. Oh, shit. <laughs> Probably the worst part about like charter fishing, if you ever have to take apart that toilet, because it is the worst. It's once a season. It's we had to do it ah, twice last year. <laughs> we do it a couple times. Now, some people just don't listen. We had to do it twice last year. Yeah. And you know what that is. It's a shitty job. Yeah, it's a shitty job. <laughs> totally. It's always like July fifteenth, and it's ninety two. Oh yeah, dude, totally. It is. Hottest day of the year. We had to take the, we had to take that apart last year, and we go to put we get it all back together, and then son looks at me and goes, "Hey, where's that screwdriver?" <laughs> I was like, uh, "I was like, did you take?" It? And we we put the whole head back together. He left like the little screwdriver he's doing the hose clamps with. He like left it back there. <laughs> and then, that's where it started. Then, that could stay there forever. <laughs> and, then, and then like a week later, we had to take it apart again. We pulled that out. Son goes, "Hey, I found my screwdriver." That's so funny. Yeah, oh. it's a shitty job. It really is. And that home, we re we had to replace the whole like the hose. Yeah. That's bad. We did that. We had to snake the hose last year. We had to take it off. Dude, the things that like grow in that thing. Dude, the all it's like calcified. Yeah, it's, oh. it's fucking gross. I didn't know that it turned like it's like old fashioned dog poop color. You know, it's like yeah. whitish yeah. gray. Dude, this is going down a, right, a so road of poop. Painting the picture. A shitty road. What do you like better, charter fishing or filming? Uh, it's nice having a little break yeah. from the charters. Yeah, the that's what I would say. I will say that. But, I mean, it's I like having people on the boat, too, especially catch their own, like, their first giant. You yeah. Know, it's like yeah. how excited they are and stuff like that. You know, seeing that look on them, you know, yeah. they're hooked for life. You know, it's. I feel like the majority of people are amped up. Oh, yeah. You know. There's a small percentage that don't really understand what and they just did. Especially you guys probably know, like you've got, you know, you've always got those couple groups who they've been coming with you for like four, five, six years and like still haven't caught one or like lost oh, a yeah. couple. And then you finally get finally them happens. and that's like, I think that's the coolest. Yeah. I always say you guys, you know, your first trip, it's like, well, you're, you're screwed now because you're not going to get one and you want to come back and keep trying. And when you do get one, you're going to want to come get another one. So. It's crazy how some people just have the like insane luck though. Yeah, do you have any yeah. customers that like every time they get one? And do you have some that are just snake? We have bit? this one group who's been coming with us for since the old JC. 
since Dave had the JC. Yeah. And they've been coming two, three, four times a year. Yeah. They do it like a business trip. They bring clients and stuff. Yeah. Um, probably because they've come so much, but those guys have pretty good. They probably pretty like good the percentage. Highest, yeah. yeah. The highest percentage. But I think uh, Diego has the best. He came out with Kaiser. Box. Yeah. Kaiser is good. Kaiser right? has a good record. Diego has a good record. Flip has a good record. Yeah. Flip's up there. He did have a couple skunk days, but yeah. He had, when you guys were, I don't know if you were fishing up north or down Chatham, we had that crazy troll bite on the bank. Mm -hmm. I remember texting you guys mm -hmm. about it. Um, Flip was on for that like 40 bite fucking crazy day. <clears throat> that's a lot of bites. Yeah. yeah it was little, bites. little, you know. Small. That's still a lot of bites. It was, <laughs> they were coming up like full, you know, full packs. So yeah, it was nuts. That's fun. That's fun fun chowder. Yeah. It was yeah. really cool. Um, do you have any questions? I got some more, but go. Uh, I, have, I have a few burning, but you go. So I've had the pleasure of being on the boat, but what would you say is the biggest advantage of the tuna.com from like Size. a boat perspective? Yeah, size. Like just the like vessel catching itself. tunas. Gotcha. Like the size, being able to go when people can't. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's that's what we want. Every, <clears throat> ideally, you want 25, 30 going. knots of wind every day. Yeah. yeah, it sucks to deal with, but right. there's less boats that's in the boat. It's amazing how they nibble in that, huh? Yeah. I think it's the noise. That's what I've always thought. Yeah. Some guys say, like, it's, it's the it. more traffic. I think just the roar of, you know, I think it just, you know, even under the water has to be louder. I think it just numbs them up. Makes sense. Do you think they can't see as well? That's what, I think it's confusion in the water. Yeah. They just yeah. can't. Yeah. You know, especially all that. Think of how much like, foam and all that's running around and just yeah. that bubble's going down there. Stores especially you have that high bait up there. Yeah. yeah. They can barely can see that line. If they're honey, they're ripping around, they're going to grab that mackerel. You think the big, big hull shadow is another advantage? Or you think it doesn't really matter all that much? I don't think so. It's, it's nice, too, and it's, it's, it's rough like that, too, because the boat's a lot more stable. So your yeah. stuff's not getting jerked around a lot, right. too. So it's, yeah. it's, the presentation's a lot better than yeah. if you're out there and, you know, a little a boat, smaller boat. Yeah, you, know, you get jerked around a lot. The ass ends coming out of the water, slamming, and yeah. you know it's it's a lot. But just being able to sit there comfortably, like stable. Yeah, like I think a big part of it. You know. Yeah, I know. There's probably at least ten days during our charter season that I'm like, I can't believe you guys are out there, but I can. Oh, I'll push like, it. I'll push it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean I can because it's like. I get it. And there's been plenty of days, too, where we cancel the charter and he and I will still go. Yeah, as a commercial you know, day or whatever. Yeah. 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 You got to. It's the best time to go. Yeah, it is. You get to the level. I like 30, 30, 35 knots. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of right there. As For that it's kind of like the breaking point. Yeah. Because I, I, even then, even if you get out there, we get out there, you know, no problem. Like, we've got, you we, get we, the, we yeah. ran home and you know october 1st whatever it was yeah, the second, second there and god knows how hard it was blowing that was, that that was a lot was. more wind than they told us it was going to be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it came up quick <laughs> and way yeah. harder than they said it was yeah. supposed to be like gusting 35 it was like sustained yeah. 30 was to like 42 west on sail flow uh, probably is that probably. that was it was opening day opening Sunday. day was the it was second like, yeah. that was like 50 knot gusts but it was supposed to late it's supposed to come up later in the afternoon so yeah. i figured we have a little bit of time to you know try to pull one out of there yeah but then it just came, like the sun came up and the wind we just it. came hard we in left the wheelhouse. And at like 5 a.m. it started getting light out. He and I were like walking around the wheelhouse, looking out the windows, being like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put out like a couple balloons, like a balloon and a down rod. And the balloon's just getting ripped off. <laughs> just <laughs> can't, can't yeah. get a balloon anymore. <laughs> so and I then he was kind of looking around and I said, and like, I didn't realize what was wild to me. I didn't realize that like the whole boat was like humming. It wasn't like whistling through the antennas. The whole boat was like, like the boat was the antenna. like this roar. <laughs> and he and I looked Sick. at each other, and I was like, "Dude, I go, this is all right sitting here." I said, "But we're gonna get off the anchor and fight one in this." That's where it comes to. I like don't that. think so. Yeah, what's think. the point that you're gonna lose? Every you're probably gonna lose them. You know, it's it's just too so much. So we, we hauled the anchor by like six a.m. and went home. It's the first time I've ever left early. Yeah, and said, "Well, fuck it." Really? That was the conditions to leave yeah. early. That's for sure. Yeah, Kyle stayed. No, he left. He went in before us. Oh, he, he was did? up on Jeffrey. I thought he's, I he's thought like, he's I'm still. calling this. I'm like, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Is your approach fighting a fish in rough weather any different than fighting a fish in like a normal 100%. day? 100%. 100%. Just keep, the, keep the ass end up sea and yeah. that rod holder goes right to the middle of the boat. Yeah. Because that's you're obviously less rock and rolling, especially if you get them straight up and down. You give you side turn side two a little bit, and now that corner is going so up and down. Is, you know, you're losing line too at the same time, especially if you're fighting a big fish. Yeah. You know, gaining on a big fish when it's shitty out is 
it's not easy. No. Do you guys adjust your butts like lower at all or are you just kind of keeping no. the same? Our butts never change. Yeah. Always stay the same. Yeah, we put in the middle when it's rough too sometimes. But we also don't go out nearly as snotty. Yeah, no. As some of the days you guys go. No. That so you're video staying, you guys getting that one with Dave White from Florida there, that was a pretty shitty day. That was a nasty shitty day. day. That was a shitty day. That was a fun fish. That <clears> hookup <throat> was fucking insane. Yeah. You know when you're, like you said, you're sitting on the ball and you're like, this is fine. And you're like, if we go broadside, it's going to suck. And this fish went like right to the anchor. Oh, yeah. Immediately. And then between three, like 40 foot humpbacks. Yeah. And we thought we had a humpback on. <laughs> and then just like, <laughs> I'm like it's fucking right then <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like oh geez like ripping a butt driving from up forward and then it wasn't a humpback no it was almost as big as a humpback though it's yeah, large one. um yeah i think the up sea thing's key because i feel like every other oh, weather pattern we're always trying to get down sea on them so you're not like drifting yeah. over the top of them right but i feel like up sea is like way softer on the fish it's difficult regardless, either way you look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, that just, boat, just too, is like a the sail. Boat. I noticed. Yeah. yeah, the bow swings around. Swings wicked fast. Wicked fast. Mm-hmm. And I was struggling to drive the fucking thing because the steering wheel is opposite of ours. Oh, yeah. Oh, Darn, dude. I yeah. was struggling. I was like, <laughs> I don't think I could do that. I feel like I'm rubbing my stomach and patting my head. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> really no, I can see that. That's, that's like, that becomes like second nature, right? Like, yeah. you can drive your boat with your eyes closed. Yeah, 100%. But then you go, then no, it was going backwards. the wrong way. And like, there's a whole lot of thinking going yeah. on. Oh, yeah. I had to, like, carry remember, the three. Just, yeah. Every okay. time I had to turn, I'm like, okay, I'm going the opposite way. Then I, go, I, then I was fine. But if I wasn't, like, thinking and I just right. needed to react quick, I'm like, I'm out. So, I got another question. Yeah. If you guys could spend a good chunk of time, week, 10 days, perfecting another tactic for bluefins, what we, or up here, up here, what would you want to try? Like, if you were like, you had no pressure to catch them and you wanted to try something different, is there anything during different prime time. during prime time that you'd want to try? can be simple can be elaborate i don't know because it just seems to work <laughs> like what yeah, we're doing right now right. it's like it's you don't really think to trolling you know you're not gonna catch me dead up here trolling yeah. anymore sandra like, hates trolling other like really? i said like north carolina like that's fun you know the rock we hate over. trolling just boring up here it's boring yeah i think because we like still when we first started like fishing with dave there it's like we did a little bit in like june you know yeah it wasn't yeah. like june didn't really have a lot of fish when i first started right yeah. so you troll around and maybe get lucky you know troll up on the curl you know go yeah. way outside you know east of the bank whatever up on tilly's yeah you know and it's just you sat there and it's it was just boring and there was like the slow rumble of the engine and it was just like hmm, oh we gotta wake up here yeah. yeah like it puts you to sleep but you know down north carolina it's fun you know but other than i like trying like new tactic it's it's i always try to like Think of like, because I do a ton of bass fishing, the luck I could bring out there to, you know, try to, you know, help yeah. catch more tunas, but there's really not much I can look at as far as, because you're fishing a lot of the same stuff like bass fishing to the edges and stuff like that, you know, drop offs and, you know, it's structure. What about you? I think probably the, like up by us the last few summers, the, the pogies have been inside there on the, on the beaches and like up against the rock pile there in Rockport. Pogies. And, <laughs> yeah well i do too but like i just i like to try to <clears throat> figure out like the, there's fish in there eating pogies and no one next to no one can hook one out of them like if you like 15 guys try it for two weeks while they're in there like one guy gets a bite yeah you know, you know I, I just like like there's got to be a way to figure that out whether it's rigging a dead pogey differently whether it's putting it on the outside like there's got to be a way to, to get bites out of that show when that happens yeah, and it may not necessarily even be using a pogey either. Right. Like I know, no, totally. I, I we were talking about north, uh, like Sam trolls and stuff in right. the pogies, and we were talking about trolling like eighteen inch when, when they were when they were in like twenty five feet of water out in front of Marshfield and Situate. We were like, dude, should we just put like bars out? Because we were looking at that drone footage of them like working the schools. You guys mm-hmm. have probably seen, yeah, that, yeah, where they like when they're not feeding, they're just like milling, milling. Yeah, outside. You know what that is, and like I. And Son and I both have done some harpooning, and buddy that I go harpooning with always said like they just can't pry themselves away from the feed. Yeah. So like they just get on the edge of it where they can like still look at it. It's like a little kid with his candy stash, but he wants to go play with his blocks. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like he's just gonna make sure that that doesn't get put away, but he's just gonna be over here and he's gonna calm down for a minute. Right. And that's like they run. I've seen it too. Like around 
like they'll come up and run like between the feed and around the feed yep. on the edge of it. And like, they won't go outside and run, but they'll just like run like around the pogies. But I think it's just, they can't pry themselves away from it. It's just so them. easy for them. They love them. Right. They love them. And I hate that they love them. Yeah, they're a pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, just, it screws everything it up screws that everything we're up. used to. Yes. Right? You know? Yes. But the guys in the bay are, are having a field day because it's easy for them to get bait and right. they're there. It's easy like, fishing. Right. Yeah, it is. Brandless fishing for the most part. Yeah. The trolling. But even like, you put, you know, I don't know about you guys, like, you know, we've tried putting pogies out on the far floater and then like, you can see the thing like Pat, like, okay, that doesn't look very you really good. You the, whole like the whole leader's like this, right? Like that. <laughs> or it's tied in five. Yeah. You know, yeah. Literally. So like, there's gotta be a better way to do that. I know. I, I wish I could get one down and fish good. Almost like fishing like a heron. Yeah. Yeah. If you we get, run stick pogies a lot. We do. Bay. And I, we put one out on Southwest corner and got bit like immediately and it was our only dead pogey that day but right when they started keying in on those manamet pogies and the fish were inside yeah. you know quite a bit guys were getting like legit bites mm -hmm. um we got a few bites at high pogies on the bank yes just running that in our far floater and then herring on the inside but yeah they look so stupid they look terrible and like i feel like sometimes when the current's ripping you have to like hook them in the nose because they're just like sideways and yeah. shit dude like, i think if you rigged them like a mullet I, we need to try it. And you split tail them like a mullet and you brine them good. And their head and mouth is so big that you don't need any chin weight. Everything can be in their right, mouth. Right. I think you could put one on a fucking planer. <clears throat> oh, God. That's what, that's my, oh, think so. that's my tactic try would be oh, it would work. fishing planers and trolling that way more just in Mass Bay in general on the bank or down in the pogies, like in the bay. Be sick. In the bay. Out east. Definitely I was going to say even outside a little bit. Yeah. 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 There's definitely a troll bite in the bay that no one's doing. Just because, I mean, the boat traffic, obviously, but yeah, the days right. that there's not that many boats and it's choppy. Yeah. I think you could, you could definitely probably catch them naked hoot, naked belly. Belly, definitely. yeah. Just naked. They'll eat it, really, anything in there. Yep. Um, the other thing I'd like to try, too, is an eel. Same. Like a big, like like a bass fish, you know, but like the great, you know, you, like, you go buy eels and you get the ones that are like the snakes. Great big ones. Who was I talking to? You got to get the those. ribbon fish, whatever, down North Carolina. They, they mow those. Yeah. They crush those. I know guys have tried eels in the canyons for like yellowfin and big eye, and I don't think they've caught them on. Well, I know they troll with them. Yeah. Like dead ones. <clears> right. <throat> but I, I think a couple guys I've talked to have tried liveies, haven't done that well with them. So maybe someone listening can prove that wrong. Yeah. Be great. Circle hook or J hook? <clears throat> ah, circle for me. Definitely circle. Tuna fishing? Circle. Circle? Yeah. It's your best odds. Agreed. Yeah. And they're small enough now. They're sneaky enough. They're strong enough for the most part that they can handle it. You know, Jeff switched over. I did. Yeah. Dark side. Dark side. But I was telling him, I have a love-hate <laughs> relationship with the hook that he switched over to. <laughs> yeah. The Mutu there, the 8 Yeah. Like, that hook can be, like, lights out, and it can suck. It sucks you know? on the far floater. Mackerel. Yeah. It's a, a unweighted mackerel on the far floater with an 8 isn't horrible. I feel like with any circle, any it kind of sucks. Any 8 down with, like, a mackerel, <clears throat> it's, like, it's 50-50 shot. I feel like you're going to catch the fish. Hmm. Are you getting them gut hooked, or are you missing the hooks? Like, oh. missing them? It's in the gut first, and then it comes out. Doesn't ring really? Set, I think. Because it's when funny. We, get it back, you can we don't bend the bends like you know, two feet up, three feet up in front of. Yeah. Them. We got to hook a few on mackerel, but I feel like most of the ones we missed were definitely on the floaters, and a couple during like high currents on the down rod. Do you guys miss bites on like moon tides, like when the tides ripping and you feel like everything's like tight, or do you not really miss bites? We don't really miss a lot of bites. Yeah. Really don't. I mean, we're all right, right at full, enough right at full, right at strike on a lot of bites. Yeah. You know, like yeah. A lot of people back off. I don't know if that makes any much of a difference on what, but we don't really miss that many. I just also think it's streaky. It's just like, yeah. dude, it's you so go weird. through the good, yeah. good totally. spots, bad like spots. Suck, we've had man. years awesome. where we've, we've, you know, we've put out every hook in the tackle shop because we just, nothing was working. And then we've had years where like we couldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Huh. I think it's great for people to like hear this because you know, like everyone listening that tuna fit that bluefin tuna fish is always like yeah should i use this hook should i use this hooks like it's good to see for them to listen that like we're all still still thinking yeah, about last, it last year you know, we like every gonna, every hook sucks <laughs> every hook sucks that's every the biggest problem sucks. with a hook is that it's a hook i know exactly. you know <clears throat> 
but we did we did all right last we were fine last year like we didn't have any hook crisis no, no. we did great last year yeah sometimes Missed they just couple down rod bites like like i said moon tides like hauling ass which i think is part of that like no offset on that hook we use but like all of our floaters were good but we started hooking the mackerel like I feel like we get some of our best bites when the tide's ripping. Mm-hmm. That rod just really? spins around and just fucking starts yeah. dumping. Really? Huh. I also think that they, speaking of the rod spinning around, is they eat squid like more ferociously than anything else. Dude, I yes. love squid bites. Squid bites, squid bites are just are the best like, bites. it's like it's always like, wow. are going away. Bro. Squid bites are the always best Always are going yeah. away. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh. If you guys catch, so say, you know, almost all the bites have been on herring and you catch a squid. It's going out. It's going out. Unless, like, it was. But in the, after last year, I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> what true. You last year, last, that's true. Last year, I don't know. Last yeah. year, Jane. Last year, we we got a couple squid, and we put them out, and yeah, they said they stayed out. Like, they that was, it didn't, wasn't wasn't the magic answer, but we've definitely had times before. You get a squid, and it, it's half an hour gone. Mm-hmm. You find you're getting more, the squid are more, getting bit more when the herring are around, or getting bit more when there's more squid, less herring around? Usually, once you get in squid it a lot, I'll throw one out. If you get yeah. yeah, you got. It. You mean you have it's kind to. of the same. You have yeah. to, yeah, because all your herring just get destroyed. Yeah, you know, if there's that, they're bad. They can destroy your mackerel too. So yeah. it's like you got to put it out. Yeah, you have a. I mean, they will eat each other, but it just lasts way long. Oh, yeah, right. Way, way, longer. way longer. It prolongs the yeah. agony. Of you kind of have no choice. At Dude, that those point. days like when the squid are horrible, it's fuck. It's almost as bad as dogfish. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't even know. You don't know. You don't even see a balloon. No, move. I can guarantee. I can guarantee you we, we have we have caught them on a fucking a squid on a mackerel a squid, or just like three squid oh, 100, on yeah, a herring. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. one hundred ten percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Especially that one you're talking about when you're taking a piss. On what we're on Hot Reels Hump there. Yeah, our squid. I think we both took a nap, or whatever. Yeah, and we. have that one went off. Real, the other ones in, they were like a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there like, was not a chance. It was, it was like, it was like all the yeah. bones. Yeah, yeah. Chance. yeah. There was a herring on here anymore. I think uh, Charlie on the radio one day, he was like, I got a skeleton at 90. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. In. Oh, God. That sounds like something he would say. He's a funny bastard. He is a funny bastard. He was out of his mind. Yeah. My phone will stop blowing up soon from him. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've ever caught a tuna on? Like, that you're like, either this is all I have or, like, this is what they're eating. That you're like, there's no way they're going to bite this, though. Never caught one on a Pollock. Can't say. Really? I was about to say, I have, caught them Pollock. I have friends of mine who caught one in Ipswich Bay on a turd Pollock. Yeah. I caught but one that's on a common Pollock up there. on a kite yeah. once. I have buddies of mine who got it. They, got, they went out and they couldn't get any bait. That'd be funny. <laughs> These guys, they went out, they couldn't get any bait. They jigged up three mud hake, and they put them out, and they tripled up <laughs> on mud hake. Triple on mudders, and then the one kid, it's two brothers, and the one kid wanted to fish mud hake the rest of the year, and they like never got another bite of one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, funny. Never caught one on a mudder either. No, nope. I, I haven't have. really fished them too much though. No, I've never caught one on a bluefish. Yeah. And lost them on a bluefish. You've yeah. had fish. I've had bluefish blue bites, but I've never successfully killed one on a bluefish. That's like a 50 50 shot, too. With those Dude, things. it's yeah. crazy. I think they're they worse chase than them pogies. <clears throat> I'd rather fish a pogie than a bluefish, personally. Yeah. They're just so angry and they have teeth and they suck. Mm-hmm. They pull, they break everything. Nets, fucking lures. Yeah, right. Fucking, they bite your own leader that you have them on. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I don't want to use that. Yeah. Uh, Nick Mazzocco is telling me he lost a fish on a bluefish because he had hide viz dacron on and the bluefish he like went another, through a ate fish the fish fucking the dacron. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that the spice making that like jet trail going through the water chasing him down. Exactly. I actually yeah. don't doubt that. I you can know? believe that. I I've watched him like out blue fishing, like watched him eat the swivel on the Rapala as I'm reeling one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They're so dumb. Very believable. They're probably legit piranhas. They are. Yeah. That's funny. Lifeless eyes. I feel like... <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> so true. Literally. They smell so fucking bad. I think that's a big advantage. Awesome lobster dot com bait. too. Yeah. Is the, awesome uh, lobster bait. They fish in the awesome live traps. The live on the dot com is nice to have. Yeah. That, that live that's a, yeah. That's, that's what I thought you guys were going to say. That's, that's true. Nice to have. That's a good yeah. point. Like that, we, we always have bait in the well. We always yeah. have yeah. from June so 15th 
on we always have 50 we can leave the dock at midnight and not yeah. worry about where we're going we have 15 herring and some whiting like, and some mackerel in the tank it's sick from an outsider looking in that's definitely the advantage i see you guys have it's huge. you show up mornings and you're like already firing them out i'm like i got one herring like we, we do keep them alive overnight but it's not like you guys you know yeah your first boat you have 15 nice hook bait herring they're curious on you because you're there first like you're gonna get yeah. a fucking bite, you know. Yeah, for sure. And there's sometimes the herring. and having the chill play too. Like we can keep the herring live at the dock in August. How long? Like how long can you keep herring in that thing? I mean, it's just like any other well. You get like two, three days out, and then they nose dust to get red. Like yeah, yeah. starts to look like shit, but they're alive. They're yeah. alive. You still getting bites on like red herring? Oh yeah, especially if nobody can get them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look yeah. Them. On a rough day when like you can't catch a herring. Oh yeah. Like, Actually. We had a day like that up on Jeffrey's. Yeah. Um, it was actually the day Dylan came out with us. Yeah. Um, and uh, it blew hard. And, now, you know, it's pretty shallow up there. So everything got kind of tossed around. Everybody was like, got the window to go out. And there was a decent amount of boats there. We had a well. I think we were, it was blowing for like two or three days. Like nobody could go. And uh, the well was, you know, we probably had 15, 20 herring in there. But they were like as red as your shirt, <laughs> <laughs> nasty, like some skin gone. Yeah, like, like disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It was like I had, le- nobody could catch it. Call le- like leprosy. That. When the mackerel, the skin starts to fall off the mackerel too. They look <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. they just crush them. Yeah, because there's only herring out there. Yeah. So it's it definitely catches those more fish, no doubt about it. It's funny that uh, that day in December when I fished with with Dave and Connor and Sal, like we got to the northwest corner and like. It was just like you're saying, you couldn't catch anything. And we caught these like tinker mackerel. And Dave and I at the exact same time saying, delete that. And oh, yeah. the thing went out and it ate it. You know, it's like, I feel like those rough days when you can't catch anything. Put, like, just put anything. Anything. How about that? Um, so middle bank, was it last year or two years ago? When it was just us two and we were like backing down simultaneously. <laughs> yeah. and we, we only caught one bait each, I think. You guys caught, I think you guys caught a herring and we caught a mackerel. Yeah. That's right. I remember, I remember this. That. Yeah. And uh, I just remember that day. It was hilarious. Yeah. There was no one else out there. It was kind of choppy. And we couldn't catch shit for bait. And we were catching dogfish. We went through like six sabiki rigs each. We've had a few fun like release days when it's just been you guys and us out there. And like, Oh, yeah. You're literally just fighting fish the whole time. It is sick. It's crazy how much they bite on release days. Yeah. yeah. Those release days, I think, yeah. I mean, they've. That, I think there's been, we've learned a lot. Yeah. Oh, dude. from not you know you don't care so like you know how strong you should go ahead That's push <laughs> yeah push the drag up yeah watch what happens yeah yep. like you yep. i mean you, if it's in the latch you still can't break 150 at nope. full full throttle right no you're better off hammering them and keeping it out of their mouth totally you know are you guys how much different are you fighting fish from release days to kill days i'm definitely putting more heat on them now commercial days yeah it's lock and load now same not backing off at all stays up at strike mm-hmm. now. even during their violent runs or you <clears> back <throat> off for the violent runs very very rarely if you can see that he's like tail wrapped you know it's you might back off a little bit but for the most part it stays up at strike now it yeah it barely moves because now you see look what you do on the catch and release days yeah you you're at strike and all of a sudden you're way over strike like five minutes into it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, let's look at this thing, another bait like 20 out. minutes into it you're almost at full <laughs> yeah exactly you know and it, the stuff doesn't break and somehow it's always here or here like yeah. it's it's like, why, why are we changing? And we're losing more fish commercially when you're trying to be more finesse. Like, I know. You know, with so more finesse. True. Why not just keep it how you are in the, in the release days? Because it's working. Yeah. You know? So it just it stays up yeah, there. Yeah, I now. think that's definitely so strange. I think last year was probably the first year we really, yeah. like, we just oh, st- screw it and just put more beef to them. Quick over strike too now. Like it's, yeah. I mean, you see what you're I like up. 60 pounds. That's 50, like my favorite. 55 to 60 pounds. Once they like get through their first shit, like all over the place yeah. deal. Once you get that real good ping on 55 to yeah. 60 yes. pounds. When it starts to sound like piano wire, you're there. Yes. Yeah, it's perfect. 100%. What's the longest fight of a tuna? 12 and a half hours. <sighs> Two of us. With a, cha- with a charter. With a charter. With a charter. From New York. What Guys time did you hook it at? Uh, like nine. Yeah. So it was an entire day. Yeah, stick whiting. Nine, we got him at we got him at nine thirty at night. At least you could kill him, right? It's big. Yeah, like six fifty dress, six forty dress. It's a big one. Yeah, hundred and twelve inch, six thirty dress in August. Yeah, just a mean one. 
Yeah, that's and not the one. So much heat. In August. <laughs> no. We broke, let, let me put it this way. This is how much drag we had on this thing. We broke three rod holders. And almost broke the Actually, floor. I remember blew the, that story. Blew the welds right out of the rod holders. Bang! Like shotgun. Pop. Oh, there goes another one. Back off the drag. Let him take a bunch of line. Put another one. Because you, you couldn't even move the rod. Was there so rough? drag on them. Yeah. No, it was, it was August. No. Summer nice. day. Grease calm. Like pretty, Just you couldn't. know. Summer day. What do you think made that fish fight? Like They all have their own what personality. What happened? Yeah. I don't know. Just Is he hooked weird? <laughs> no. 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 Right in the, right. You know, it, it had, I mean, it had me in the latch because it was 12 <laughs> right? hours. You know, anywhere else it would have broke off by then, especially That's the heat we had on. Nuts, dude. I was up at full at the end of the fight, right before that fourth throttle holder almost gave out. <laughs> yeah. And we, by the end of the fight, I, the biggest guy, they're all New York firefighters. They're, yeah. And I was like, you, get over here. Big. <laughs> <laughs> big fucking dude. Put him, I think it was low gear. And at full, and I was just holding the line as hard as I could. Sandra was hold holding the line. I had, at this point, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, this has to be over. Like, I, at this point, it's like, either lose him or yeah. catch him. The OG I to can't. play it. OG, yeah. when he gets mad, like, over three hours, he's like, wants, like, has a pair of scissors in his pocket. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm fucking done. Patience is running out. <laughs> yeah. And you just sit there and holding it. I'm holding, like, pulling as hard as I could. And he's reeling. He's pulling him, reeling and reeling. And finally, eventually, he just kind of planed up. And I just bump in the boat head, and he was just, those guys would gain like 18 inches. And I just tap in gear and like just let it cruise. And then they'd get another, you know. And he came up. Oh my God. I thought, dude, I thought you're going to have a mental breakdown. Sandro missed the first harpoon shot. Oh my God. Right. Dark out. We get the lights on. This thing comes up. It was a bunny. It was a barn door. And he throws right. He went right over his back. And I was like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) And, and I mean, and I was like, you're all right, man. You're all right. Just pick it up. He's still right here. Like, at that point, I think we finally broke his spirit. Like, yeah. he kind of was laying there at that point. Yeah. But picking up and then son of the second throw, I thought his I thought his shoulder was going with the pole. <laughs> he threw it so hard. <laughs> Anger. Uh, yeah, that oh was a long God. one. And that was the, we didn't have stern controls, the old boat. So I was driving, like, on the back of the wheelhouse, and I drove uh, for, like, most of the day. That's right. You didn't have my, my, I was like, the next, like, four days, my neck was smoked from, like, looking over my shoulder all day. <laughs> I, I had to go to work the next day. I was still a mechanic then. I was like, I couldn't hold a wrench. My fucking foot is just, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to like, do shit on a car. I was like, I dropped the wrench. I'm like, I can't even hold the wrench right now. This is ridiculous. Uh, that's incredible. And that was, we hooked that fish on the northeast corner, or, or out that way somewhere. Yeah, it was northeast corner. <clears throat> and we went, at one point... We were like halfway back to Gloucester and then made a loop to the southern. So we went in this big horseshoe. And by the time we caught the fish, we were like eight miles to the south, southwest of, of the anchor. So we went from the northwest corner halfway. We were like halfway back to Gloucester and then went way down to the southern eight miles from where we started. So you went like almost 20 miles? Probably. Miles. Probably. Ugh, brutal. Dad, I think Dave, Dave flew to like Texas. Yeah, yeah. And then flew flew somewhere else. Yeah, flew somewhere else, and he was like back home. He's like, "You got what?" Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's we caught the fish at nine thirty, and then it was you know an hour to get back to the anchor. Hauled the anchor. We dropped the fish off at like midnight or something. I got home at like two o'clock in the morning. That's a long fish fight. Sounds bad. Never again. So, how many years ago was that? That was in two thousand and ten. No. It was eleven after that. Eleven, tw- I can yeah, eleven or twelve, probably. Well, I mean, so since then, I mean, with all these like releasing giants, do you guys think you would have caught that fish faster? No, no, no. We had so much heat on. He dumped ha- He dumped almost the whole eight, spool. Eight hours. Eight in. hours into it. Eight hours in. He almost he, half full. Like we were back at ground zero. Like the devil. Like I've never. And we play, we fish plenty of heat, insane, dude. You know, it's it, but it's just one of those fish that just. That's a long time. Never fallen that long. I got yeah. twelve hours. Like three, four, six yeah. in that air, that range. We lost wow. one after eight. Eight. Oh, and that was rough as shit. We hooked up at the flag. We broke them off in the cove. Jesus Christ! Which is a pretty good, <clears throat> pretty good jaunt away from that. that. Was, and that, but at the end of that, we actually had the rod in the bow on that one. Had to chase them. And I was just him. inside driving, just putting in gear in the chart. It was rough out, and the charter's inside with me. And then, like, I was like, well, he's kind of gaining line. I was like, I got to get him a harpoon. So I, like, take the boat out of gear. I grab the bucket and the pole. I go running up the side. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> four or five foot plus. Yeah, it was shit. I'm like, I was like, the pole's behind you. Like, ran back inside, put it in gear, drove up on him. We never saw him. I think that thing might have been snagged or something. I think yeah. it was in the it gill never, or, never, like, in the peck fin. Never went down, really. Kept, just kept going. And, you know, he never, never, like, did, like, normal things you see him doing when yeah. you're fighting him. It never just stopped. kept going. Never stopped. Yeah. 
So I like, I ended up breaking them off like 40 feet away. Fuck. Where's the weirdest place you've ever hooked one that you caught? I hooked a couple in the tail. Yeah. I hooked one in like the rudder, like yeah. in, the, in the rudder fin there. Yeah. yeah. That's the best. If you only knew you had them hooked in the tail, it's full, <laughs> right, right, in. I don't know. If you only knew, but obviously I could take that yeah. chance. I hooked one with a circle hook between the two tit fins. Oh, on the bottom, perfectly that's, that's right in the center one. with an that's inline, an inline circle hook. That wow. thing was probably wrapped up. Pull Don't hook. hook. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Caught right there. Yep. I, had one. Was a weird one. I pulled one and caught him in the tail when it pulled. Then we got him in the tail, and then he came up, and I was like, "How do I get the tail rope on this fucking?" Thing? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I got actually got a crazy one from two Decembers ago. Uh, I fished with Kyle, you know, the battle wagon in December, and uh, we hooked this fish up at the first hole, and. Uh, fighting this fish for a little while and i'm like what this fish feels like really wrapped up like super wrapped up like every little bit and i could just like feel line against line so i find this fish find this fish and finally I end up pulling them up backwards and uh stick up obviously harpoon them gaff them go to put the tail rope on the leader broke off at the swivel but the swivel was so embedded into its tail you know, catching them by the swivel. What? That's yeah. fucked up. You're going to have to send us that picture. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Remind me. I'll send you that picture. That's oh. nuts. Just swivel. Cramp line. Stuck. Just buried. That's yeah. insane, dude. So I think it was just so wrapped up that yeah. like crotch breaking. Yeah. Then I actually was talking to a buddy that he thinks. Yeah. Feel free. Um, oh, another one. That the fish <laughs> ate it and maybe popped out its gill or something and another one grabbed it. Hmm. But I don't know how the true that would be. That, I could see tough. that. I, I heard um, that picture, Green Harbor Bait and Tackle. I don't know who it is. Um, if they listen, I'm sure they know who it is. But coughed a bluefish out on the kite and <clears throat> got two. One was like strung through the gills, and then the other one was on the hook. I've heard that. I've heard a story of that before. A guy with, in Maine on on a chunk, a chumming. Yeah. And the fish ate a chunk. Oh, it, totally went out his, it went out his gill plate, and the, the other fish that was in the chum grabbed it, and he had, two, he had two of them. Strung up on wire. That'd be sick. Is it easier or harder? Yeah. You know? I would think it'd be easier. As long as the line doesn't break. They must just fight each other and like... Yeah. I feel like that line's got to break. That was the other thing too. The 12-hour fish, when I was... We got it in the boat and I went to cut it up. Looked in his mouth. I was like, what the hell? I pulled the dogfish out by the nose. Right out of his throat. Whole... Like a full-grown dogfish. That's crazy. You think there's times that you have a dogfish on and they eat it? Mm, Probably. I would say not like the squid scenario we just talked about. Yeah. But maybe it's possible. Have you That's guys a ever damn one hard hook set. To I put one out once. There was so like bad. legitimately put them out. Yeah, no, they didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I ever caught was f- nothing but dogfish in its stomach. It's yeah. weird. It's like why they like you can be like surrounded by like herring and mackerel and they just plugged with dogs. You're like, oh, that was wrong with you, man. <laughs> but they like I feel like they those streak, ones are from they England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right. right, right. Those are med fish. Dude, they yeah. streak on them though, right? Yeah. Oh, they'll look at. Oh, yeah. I said you can put a rubber boot down and they'll streak on it all day. Yeah. I was they'll telling before you get to the house, I was telling these guys that a buddy of ours put out a, a stick koi fish one year. <laughs> <laughs> what color was it? it? Was it gold? It was a goshiki. It was white, <laughs> white. It was white and gold. That's, with the, black name the, that's the name of this podcast. It, it was, was a stick goshiki. goshiki. <laughs> It was white and orange with black spots on it. Did it get oh, bit? God. No, they looked at it. Oh, it was the wow. same day that Saunder and I caught the one in the, the tournament. Oh, my God. That was a crazy fish, bro. <clears throat> that was like a nine something, wasn't it? Or was it a thousand? Uh, 914 gutted. 914 gutted. Yeah, so pretty much a thousand. That's gross. One, That's 117 one. inches. 740 dress. I felt bad for Beaker. That yeah. Was, that was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Because we were in the tournament in Gloucester and. We get our fish, and our buddy Beaker text, had texted Sandra. It's 115 inches. No, he said 111. Yeah. He was, he was, he which was, is which a jumbo. Which is funny. Yeah. Which yeah. is, which is funny because yeah. uh, we were fishing the cove the day before, and we had one. Yeah. But we didn't see a lot. And he had one, too. So he went back up there. But I talked to Jeff. Jeff was like, you got to get down here. Yeah, <laughs> and he couldn't hook one, so I was like, "I'm gonna try." It. So we went. We go down the southwest corner, and we so so we tie our fish up. And Sandra has a text from Beaker that says one eleven. Sandra fires a text back and goes one seventeen. See at the scales, bud. <laughs> <laughs> he, was like, he was like, "You kid." I guess the crew of that crew, I like asked him. He was like, "You think he's messing with you?" He's like, "No." That's a big one. Yeah. Ours was so in the tournament. Ours was nine fourteen, and. 
speakers was what, like eight? Eight something. No, nah, no, nah, like, that was like low eights. Yeah. But like, do those two fish in a tournament yeah. at the same day? Yeah. And I still don't think there's been a fish that big. Either of those fish in haven't been beaten in, the, no. in that tournament. Probably not. No. Jeff's uh, Green Harbor tournament fish last year. That was big. big. It was eight something. High right? eights, I think. Which is, I mean, that's fucking big. Yeah. Yeah. Big fish. I caught yeah, it. and like the average was like six, seven hundred. Yeah. That just was much bigger. We caught that on 130 Premier too. Oh, yeah. With, an, yeah. with an 80 live bait. I had that, that hook fish. For, I, I had that hook forever. I lost yeah. it. That really? fish, uh, that fish is 118, 935, gilled and gutted. And we got on 130 and it was gut hooked. He was wow. actually like back roof hooked. Yeah. Like, like right where just the roof started. Yeah, like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Yeah, it had like a lap of skin. He had hard oh, yeah. shit. Oh, oh luckily. after like two he hours. He came up like he was like coming up for like a big, like his first big pinwheel, and he was like dead as he was surfacing. Oh, and we just backed right and in. We literally just turned him and reeled him in like a sheet of pot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. so just weird. Just keep his head up, keep that's cranking. Awesome. Dude, his heart was as hard <clears throat> as a rock. Really? It was like pale white, and like, you know how like sometimes I have that weird shit yeah. on him? It was like pale white and was oh, firm. When I took it out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Nice shit. Yeah. Dude, we just scared him to death. What? No, we scared the tuna to death. Oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that Boston whaler scared him. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this fish went around. So it cut off, I think, all of Willie's lines. No, it oh, got Jesus. hung in Willie's far floater, and Willie cut his far floater yeah. off at the reel. And then it got hung up in yeah. bank tanks anchor. Oh, yep. God. And then it got hung up in our anchor. Don't get us down that road. And then it went into the bay. And then there was this Boston whaler that... <laughs> all I see in the back, right? All I see in the back. There's like a 15-foot <laughs> Boston, <laughs> <laughs> the Boston whaler. The oh, guy no. pulling oh, the no, starter no. cord, <laughs> trying to turn the engine on, trying to get the engine running. I can grab more, too. Guys. And he's, we like, had, he's like, my battery's dead. I'm like, tilt your... The fish is going... Whoosh, like on the surface black back behind his boat and he's going and then he went down and i'm like tilt your fucking end job he's like i can't my battery's dead <laughs> so we, i think we actually took it out of the holder and put the rod tip in the wall yeah right was yeah. it the and same guy we ran into at the southwest corner? <laughs> <laughs> we had like the same thing happen Dude, we had one at the southwest corner one time there's this like it was like a 23 sea craft or something and our fish is like going right for him and we've been backing around through boats and circles for half an hour 45 minutes at this point and we start yelling. These guys were like, hey, he's coming right at you. And I see the guy walk. He, he went to move. He walks to the console and he turns the key. Yeah. And I watched three dudes go like this. The guy turns the key and I watched three guys at the same time go. <laughs> and look at the engine. I looked at Dave and Son and go, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> and then one guy, he jumped in. Yeah. They got their, I in think, the water? He, I think he got, the they bed. got one of their lines in the propeller of the boat. And it when he started it, it wound it tight. And and choke the engine out. And that's why they all turned around. But like one guy rips his shirt off and jumps in, and he's like unwinding it from the prop, and then he jumps in and off they went. I was like, well, that was pretty. But cool. the same thing, a hole in the rod underneath the boat, so it doesn't get like hit their motors or anything like that. Yeah. Like, what's the worst tangletron mess you've ever been in? Like around your own anchor, other people's anchors. 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 Have you ever had to cut your line and re put it on another rod? Oh, I, you did. <laughs> I, I did. I did a lot. <laughs> so. The fish was just with Kyle again in December. Obviously, we have a few beers, but we hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so we just catch a fish. We go and we restring the line. And I did it. I'll take full blame because I definitely <laughs> did it. <laughs> so I missed a guide. Oh, I've had that. Yeah. So when the fish is going, 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 it gets in the dacker on. I'm like, hmm, that looks a little funny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. I missed a guide. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> i mean it's fine now but he gets straight up and down it's like we're not catching this fish yeah so so long story short is yet basically we back down kind of let it go slack tied the tied the uh because he uses um dacron tied the dacron off on a cleat and he was kind of just like playing with that yeah so i had to you like a double uni to put it together restring it put it together and uh off we went to fight the fish luckily we caught him but yeah, I looked up. I was like, oh. "Did you ever fight it on the uni after that, or did you get it right on the spot?" Ah, uh, for a little bit, and then it came right to us. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you got to figure you tie a fish to the back of the battle wagon; he's probably gonna get tired pretty fast. Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> <Yeah>. That boat's <laughs> sick, dude. That big thing's cool. Real. It's a big rig, but yeah. So sometimes beers and tunas don't mix, but no. Yeah, luckily it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really drink on the boat. We don't either. Never. No. We drank a couple times, like no. This is when, celebration. This is when we got beers. back to the dock. 
Oh, oh yeah. We, no, I know. I'm just saying. Dicking around. I'm just saying in general. No, no. It's like it's sharp, sharp, sharp objects and rough seas and things yeah. can happen. Knives, so quickly, yeah. gaps, yeah. and shit. Things happen fast. We usually don't have a beer until we're a hundred percent cleaned yeah. up, done, and the customers. That's are our. Going. That's uh, our. That's our, our issue. Downfall. <laughs> that's our downfall. <laughs> we're more as soon as the lines are on the cleats, and then we sit there for a minute. We kind of talk about the day, or whatever. And then we look at each other like we look around like, fuck, someone's still got to clean this boat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> two beers later three beers later oh man oh god never it'll be, fails it'll be better this summer though the liquor store in front of the marina is probably not going to be open no. this episode of the podcast is brought to you by the Dion Children Foundation the Dion Children Foundation was established by the Dion family as a way to bring awareness to rare and ultra rare genetic diseases in children such as limb girdle muscular dystrophy or LGMD LGMD is a neuromuscular disease that causes progressive muscle weakness, leading to the loss of ambulation and eventually affects the heart and lungs. Recently, the Dion family was faced with the heartbreaking news that their son Peter and daughter Maggie were diagnosed with LGMD and are battling this rare disease. The core belief at the Dion Children Foundation is that no child should be left behind. For more information or to donate to this incredible cause and family, please visit the Dionfund.org. The Dion Foundation is also the official charity of the 2023 Nantucket Big Game Battle. So if you are fishing that event this summer, uh, good luck and thank you so much for the support. I have a good path to go unless... I got a good one and then maybe we'll go your path. All right, and I got a few other good ones. All right. So, you may not want to answer this, but what do you think is the hardest part about being on Wicked Tuna? Fishing wise, not like. Fishing wise? Fishing wise. Hmm. Is it the boats that know the boat? Is it the. I mean, there's definitely some of that, you know, boats yeah. that know the boat, that little stuff. Sometimes you're fishing up, you know, completely different. So you say you go up to the northeast corner, nobody's been there. You know, if you're sitting on anchor there, guys will, you know, they'll come over and putt you, check you out and stuff like that. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. If but I not, think even that being said, I think even if we, we had that boat and we're just doing charters every day, like people are still going to come and look at us. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. I feel like if you have that style boat. Right. If you have a Downey's boat over 30 feet, you're getting looked at. Yeah. 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 So you think like that's probably the hardest part as far as fishing wise i mean it's it's not even that bad you know it does happen it's not like it's like happens every right. day you know there's fish everywhere now for the most part so like, yeah right right yeah there you go you have a shot for the most part but you know it's probably some of it i would say that aspect but then like you know like we have the people we talk to right like yeah you guys and jeff and charlie and kyle and you know but like people are always asking us like people who we hardly even know or whatever right you know they're asking us because they know that we go a lot i'm sure you guys get it too right Cause, yeah yeah <clears throat> and then it's like well, that's like, a touchy subject you know <laughs> yeah you don't want to be a dick but it's that's a good like, that's i listen i listen to, to the, the, no, the weather <laughs> yeah. yeah like that i was listening to that driving my truck and i was like yep like yeah full nods on that one yeah. It can almost do you a disservice. I don't know if we mentioned it when we talked to Jeff, but like you almost don't want to talk to too many people for your own sake. Totally. Too. Totally. You drive yourself nuts. Because like he was saying, like, you know, you get the one person to one person, one person, and now you're at ten. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we probably talked to like five people, maybe. And it's and I'd super- say like two people every day. Yeah. Three people every day. And having oh. the two boats, it's super helpful. I mean, right. yeah. a lot, I mean right. it's just the yeah, two of us talking. Yeah, you guys can talking. divide and conquer. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's tricky. I started basically saying, like, I'll let you know in the morning. Like, where are you going tomorrow? You know, you get the old, like, it's Thursday night. People You're are right. taking a Friday off mm-hmm. or whatever. It's Friday and people fishing Saturday, Sunday, and you get the text, like, where should, if, I was get, if you're going to go tomorrow and you're me, where would I go? You know, you get three to 500 of those texts. A summer. Yeah. It's outrageous. Oh, yeah. You know what else is really funny that always happens inevitably is you you try to, like, give somebody a, re- a reasonable place to go fishing, but someplace that you're not fishing. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, you should go try up here. And then they, they text you, like, 9 o'clock in the morning, like, yep, got one. Thanks yeah. a lot. Like, <laughs> Fuck. I should go there. <laughs> yeah. I should take my own advice. Definitely, yeah, right. go, Definitely has happened. Why didn't I go there? Yeah. 
like Dave with Eric, right? How many times did we send Eric places? Oh, Dave, God. Dave's buddy Eric. He's lucky though. Jeez. And uh, and we'd always he always asked Dave, and he like you know he'd go after work, like leave at three o'clock in the afternoon, and like Dave would be like, yeah, you know, go try up here. Like there were some bites there last week. There's not a lot of boats. And Eric, he, you know, he'd leave the dock at three and like four thirty. He'd be like, send Dave a picture. We got him. Thanks. Like, yeah. it's like, wait, and you're wait, still what? sitting there. The yeah, like, right. like, wait, what? And at least we like, you know, though. And we've like yeah. steamed to the southwest corner that day, and it happened, you know, and it sucked. We're like, wow, right. why shouldn't we should listen to ourselves, I guess. Oh, shit. Yeah, we started basically telling people the morning of, like, people that right. we actually want to answer. We'll yeah. tell you, the, we'll tell you the, you know, yeah. not that we don't want to answer going. everybody. It's just you can't. Yeah. You no, know, you don't no. like people. Yeah. It's just it's no, part of the game. You'll right. ruin yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's those guys that you share everything with, and those guys that you share you know, yeah. partially. Yeah, with, you yeah. Know? And it's just part of it. It's, you can't you can't tell everybody everything. No, you know, unfortunately, you just can't. In the, and in and the, you can and you can tell every a lot of people everything, and there's still you're still not gonna be able to apply it unless you're out there and you right. know exactly. when right. to apply right. exactly. those things. Right. You know, exactly. So situational. Yeah, like there's definitely people you know you you can tell them what's going on but if they don't understand what needs to be done when yeah. it needs to be done where to sit yeah which tide to wait for yeah you know all that stuff then like you might as well be talking into the wind because exactly they, exactly a lot of times these spots are efficient to like especially like the bank you know yeah. they're not even out there early enough they're not going to get where they need to be anyways right yeah. Like, right yeah you'll get a bite i guess you know yeah. like there's definitely days that we can't leave early enough that we get out there and we're like we get a decent shot where we're gonna set up, but you know you don't feel like that's you're, like eighty percent of the game. The zone yeah. sitting where you want to be, hundred yeah. percent. And it's a conf. It's I don't even know if it's a hundred percent about the tunas. I think it's a lot about like how you feel. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Depth, like saying like where I need to sit. I was like, he knows I'm super anal about it. Like I'll reset the anchor five times a day if I have to. If you have like shitty conditions, you know, it's yeah. like I need to be where I need to be like, mm-hmm. to sit there mentally, and I can't. I know. Yeah. If I swung off into one eighty. Yeah, I could probably hook one out there. Right. I swung off into like 90. Yeah. You know, yeah, you have a shot to catch one there, but like you want to be where you want to be. And it's like, you can't sit there like comfortably and like fish your stuff yeah. unless you like mentally like there. Duh. I know. Mm-hmm. You're going to say that second guess yourself the whole time. You're going to drive yourself crazy. And that's yeah. why not just take the 20 minutes, just get it done and put yourself. And up. that's Beaker taught me that was like, trust it with your life. And if like, if you don't like it and then fix it, change it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like do what you think needs to be done. Yeah. Don't just idle, you know, sit idle by and like wait for the right thing to happen it's funny too like when you do that when you do that change we've been talking about this on probably several of the podcasts and you do that change that like instinct change you're like i just don't feel like we're like i want to go 10 feet deeper and you get fucking bit. That's all that matters. you get bit mm-hmm. you know and sometimes it's the minute you set up because you're the only one who moved mm-hmm. i think you know? that's just so curious too is that once you hear that once they hear that roar of the engine you know especially right. if there's this lobster or something around there they're gonna come check you out yeah you mm-hmm. know everybody's sitting out especially if you're switching around like sell those corner mill bank fishing around like a lot of center consoles stuff like that's super quiet you know they once you start up reset your anchor mm-hmm. if there's one swim by on that outside there you know it's like oh maybe i'm looking if i'm hungry yeah. i might hear that boat i'm gonna go check him out see if he's a lobster boat whatever yeah. throwing some scraps over you know dragger you know, like I'm check you out and you know, get that third rod out and wait two seconds, all of a sudden the rod bends over, like, okay, we're on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How often do you guys chum nowadays? Haven't in years. Haven't really. We had one in the chum uh briefly. Um I think it was October on the northwest corner. But it was pretty brief. He was there for like five minutes and he left. But do you guys prepare to chum each day or do you just no. like no we don't even it's kinda like one of thought those about things. it. Yeah. I miss it though. I miss it. Yeah. I too. miss it. I that was it. fun. Mm. I mean, that was like to me, like when I think of some of the most fun days tuna fishing, it's, it was chum fishing. There's, yeah. There's no better Sitting feeling. off on the deeper water on the yeah. northwest corner. Deep, I mean, we used to sit in 200 feet on middle bank and throw chum. Yeah. If, yeah, if we were fishing like where we fish now on the bank, you'd be like, oh, God, we're way too shallow. We get way oh, yeah. 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 Like 175, yeah, like 170, 180, 200. Felt pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. 200, 220. Like you felt comfortable. That's where you were chumming. That's what you were doing. Yeah. Or chumming in Ipswich Bay. That was my favorite. Yeah. yeah. That's you wonder best. if you could still, if the bait's just so plentiful now that they're just not going to react to it, if you could actually sit out that deep and do it. Yeah. You probably you know? could. You know, you could, just nobody really does it anymore because what's happening now works. Why not sit in the bait? You have natural chum there. They're going to come through and see it. You know, yeah. Put your stuff. Put your stuff. Yeah, why I think think nowadays it makes more of a difference on the migration out. <clears throat> like yeah, not, not when they're patterned We here do it a little bit in like the deep in water. Yeah. 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 
But that's the best when you get him in the chum. You try to rig a chunk, chum, you're like yeah. shaking. You're like, oh, yeah. is he still there? He's still there. I'm like, I can't put the chunk. I can't like rig the chunk because my hands are shaking so much. I just want to get it down and then like put it down, like work them. You know, like the bank, I always like bank was always like the hardest to hook, you know, chum fish. Yeah. They always seem like they were the smartest, like, especially if it was a single. Yeah. You know, I've had singles in the chum for like an hour and a half, two hours and never come to go. I had just one on the Northwest corner with Bob. I was with Bob you know, Cook right when he got his boat. It was like three hours. Plus, did you hook him? Yeah, we did. We hooked him finally, and then we broke him off. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> wow. And the flag too. I had a wicked heckler with Bob on the flag. That was a big fish. That it was like three or four. Same thing. It was like three and a half hours. Thing had like I. It must have been honestly. It was like two five gallon buckets of chum by the time we hooked him. Jesus. Unreal. Who do you start fishing with? That was my path. I was, we we're going to go down. Do you want to go Oh, there? yeah, go down it, dude. Yeah, how did you guys, like, I, I kind of started to know you guys when the JC was around, more right. than you early, right. I think. But how did you get on, like, how did that whole thing come to fruition, fishing with Dave and getting started tuna fishing and and all that? Um. Well, he was really good friends with my neighbor. And he always just told Dave, he was like, take this kid, this kid loves to fish, take him out fishing, take him out fishing. He was like, no, whatever, blah, blah. I think one day he was like, all right, I'll take him. I need a guy. And uh, so I ended up going and, you know, I stuck ever since. You know, I think we fished uh, halfway hump. Mm -hmm. We didn't see shit. <laughs> 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 Never mind the fish. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was just that, yeah. you know, I've always loved, you see the boats coming with the big rods, you know, big fish. It was like, I was always too shy to like approach them. Like, and did you bass fish and all that, like leading up to that? Or was it just straight into tuna fishing? Like large mouth bass? Like, yeah, like anything. Like, oh, did you? No, I was, I was a dock rat. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was always catching straight bass when I brought the dock. I was going you know, large mouth bass fishing all the time. I just loved it. I love fishing. Something I never got sick of. Yeah. So I, like, I had that shot, you know, and I just kind of went with it and just kind of put my head down. And, you know, That's awesome. Yeah. I love, and I, ever since, you know, it's ever just seen, not even, not even hook one on that first day, just like seeing all the stuff and what's involved. You're like, yeah, now I really want to hook one. Yeah. It's yeah. like a charter. Right. Like they see yeah. that, they see that stuff like, oh, wow. You know, like, so we didn't mark anything, but like, just what, what that rod just bent over. Like, yeah. oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, yeah. what the potential is. Yeah. And then it's just, after that, it's just literally just you know, yeah. hooked ever since, you know, it's love it. Yeah. I feel like if you've never seen those rods. And you see them for, for the first time, you're like, holy shit. Okay, what, yeah, what do you yeah. catch on that? <laughs> the, yeah. the tip of this rod is like a foot from the water. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's nuts. How did you get started? I mean, I grew up, you know, when I was a kid, we my parents had a boat and like grew up, you know, going striper fishing with my father and stuff. But my dad tuna fished out of Gloucester back in like the 70s. <clears throat> so it always, you know, he told me stories and his, showed me his old pictures and stuff. And then finally I went, I used to go like try to catch it you know the little tunas with my uncle which mm. was always just looking back on that is just laughable <laughs> right? but uh finally went tuna fishing with these guys from ipswich my dad and i went with them so i caught my first one on them that was the old the, the emma drew yeah on their old grady and then and then uh that summer i actually had gone to high school in new hampshire with the guy who built the karen lynn his his kid so i talked to him I went and fished with him and his kid a couple times and then I was going to go work for him for Colin, but he already had somebody for the summer, but Jim, you know, was like, Hey, you know, if you're interested, like I can throw your name around if I know. And he was Dave, you know, Dave was on the same dock at the time. So he was like, yeah, he needs a guy here. Like call call this guy up. He's looking for somebody for the summer. And that was, I was in, in college. So it was like just my summer job in college. And here, here we are. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Things have changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty wild. It's been gone by so fast, too. Yeah. It's you, crazy how it's gone yeah. by You guys so are on fast. season 12 of being on TV. 13, 12, 13? Coming up on 13. Yeah. We're going to film 13. We're going to film 13, 13, 13 this summer. This That's it's fucking crazy. I never thought that it was going to last that long. I don't yeah. think anybody did. No one. Yeah. It's crazy. I'll tell you right now. This is just me, my personal opinion. Yeah. Not that it's not lovely having you on the boat. The fur, the footage, of the first fucking season. Yeah, when you're chumming and stuff. Yes. Yeah, that was right. The best. Oh, absolutely. That was the best. No, shit. I've, yeah. I've rewatched. Yeah. No, I mean, you know how ner ner yeah. how much we nerd out on fishing. I've yeah. rewatched the last episode of the first season. Yeah, I remember that. 20, 20 times. Yeah. Easily. That was sweet footage. That was, that Sick was awesome. Footage. That was like it's still great. Yeah. It's still awesome. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but there was just something about that first season. Yeah, when they were trying, it's like. 
how we used to fish, even like yeah. in the bay and it's stuff. exciting. Yeah. Totally. You know, it's you exciting. Know, in the bay we were chumming and shit. It's so fun. Yeah. I mean it it is it's really fun now. Right. It's just I feel like when all the things happened back then it was Well, I feel like when we were <coughs> also like twelve years older. Right. I know. You know? Think yeah. of how many tunas in that time right. frame. It's insane. But I feel like too, like back when we were chumming, like felt like you there was this feeling of like we worked harder for it. You right? worked, yeah. yeah you so you got it. one. You like now it. it's like it's cool. I threw a herring out and I got one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Back then it was like you know we I cut two totes of herring up today and sweat my ass off yeah. in hundred degree and sun. Rigged the perfect bait. Yeah. Gill right. netting bait. Yeah. All that right. Shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I yeah. that back. That's why I think I enjoyed or I miss those days. Is like although I think if you we worked, did, if we did that now, I think we'd be like f this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That's so right. Used yeah. to how we are now. Though. Um. Yeah. But yeah, like there was definitely like, you know, more of a sense of like, yeah, we, I'm, I'm glad I caught that one because we worked our asses off all day for it. Yeah. Never mind the days when we'd catch two or three of them. Yeah. They were so spoiled you know? now. It's God. absurd. That's the only second psych- part about this fishery now is, is that anybody can go out there now and if you can put a hook to the back of a mackerel, a herring, a whiting, or a pogey, whatever, you have a shot. It's almost as good as we have a shot now. Totally. So it's like, it's, it's, it's great to have like, see that many fish around and be like that much easier. But at the same time, it's like, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. It's good to see that many fish around though. And they're just like the size class, man. Yeah. What next, what's next year going to be? Cause it was a lot of like one Oh fives and one Oh eight. Lots. Are they going to be Hopefully they shrink. big, big? Yeah. Are they yeah. Gonna be, yeah. Like, I like going to be 90, 95s. Yes. 95 is the 88, perfect 88, yes. 95. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'll nice take fish. those every day. And then what, are those fifties going to come back and just, I don't know. I eat, hope we don't remember the, the years where everything was seventy-two and three eighths. Do you remember you know? dragging them to the doors and you're like, "Yeah, fucking stand with the seven of them, <laughs> seven of them, a, seven of them a day." It was yeah. good just, fishing, but it was sick fishing, but it was just torturous. It is. Yeah, I agree. You could you, you felt weird harpooning anything. That size yeah. class is perfect for charters, though. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's absolutely. 70, good run, inch fish. Yeah. Run easy five. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Seventy-five, seventy-eight inch run of charters, like perfect. Oh, it's amazing. All day long. Amazing. I got a okay. weird, different question. Okay. So, for someone that's kind of newer to f- tuna fishing, don't do it. Yeah, go, go to school. S- <laughs> go to yeah. school. What's what do you think they should concentrate on the most? first like for their first year of like really going it say they're just starting a commercial fish quote unquote commercial fish right and they have all their gear and all that. yeah like what do you think they should focus on the most is it the spots is it the tackle is it the 100 percent tackle because that's that that shit needs to be 100 percent correct or else you're just wasting your time out there yeah yeah you know if you expect if you're just getting into it you know something like that it's just you know it's, i've had times being on other but we're like i'll go be on another boat you have to close your eyes. <clears throat> no, but I, I'll get on another boat and like <laughs> their crimper set up and stuff. And like, I've had times where I've, you know, slept two crimps in a day. And like, I, I, I was like, all right, hang, like we're taking two hours right now. We're not putting another hook in the water until we figure this fucking crimper out. Yeah. yeah. You know, like yeah. if there's you, no point of being out there. Exactly. I know. Yeah. Like that kind of failure, like sit at the dock and figure it out before you leave. Yeah. Yeah. Get a scale or whatever. Hook it up to some trucks. Your shit should break in the middle of the line. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Nothing should slide. Or even like it might, you know, you know, we always say that, but even like you might see it break in the crimp, but that's because you've pulled on it so hard it stretches thin and then yeah. breaks yeah. in the crimp, right? Should at least break at the breaking <clears throat> strength. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we don't we don't scale anything. We, we don't scale it, We just throw it up on a gin pole and pull, yank, flick it. Oh, it feels tight. He'll hold the gin pole and I'll like reach down and be like, ding, ding, ding. You guys it's scale like, your drags? No. No? By heel. Off. Everything's by feel. Huh. And knock on wood. It's been I just like knowing. Yeah. I can, like if... I can scale one by hand with no get a, scale, within get it within five, five pounds. pounds, but yeah. I just like knowing exactly what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm kind of curious, but I don't. It would be curious to like, what's working, for you working to, you know? It would be curious for like, I'd be curious to like you to set one by hand, like where you like Just it, to see the difference between pull. you two. And then, yeah, but the difference, not only that, but like then put scales on each rod. Yeah. yeah. We each did a rod yeah. to where we thought it was good, but then put scales on it. Mm. Yeah, we do. We do like forty-two pounds of strike, like up to the button. You guys strike like as long as I can hear that, like that ping. Yeah, and that like that tighten in that spool. I feel like yeah. Well, I mean the one thirties, you get the range too. So like even if you're a little bit loose, like you, oh, you yeah. know by the bend of the rod how much pressure you're putting on right. the fish. Sorry, that pinging in the reel. That's how you kind of know it's like yeah. You, <laughs> when the line getting line getting tight on the spool there. Yeah. 
kind of know we have pressure. So tackle. You think that's the most important? There's time on the water. Yeah. You know, that's that's really what it is. There's time, time on the water, water is going to breed everything else. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I could tell you to do this, but it could be different this next day. You know, yeah. it's like you just got to adapt and just could pay attention. And, and it's fish, you know, it's fishing middle bank 100 days and like knowing that 108 is you want to move up a couple feet. Yeah. Yeah. As an example, no one go live or die by that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you get high tide. Not an Yeah, you got you got high tide, low tide. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. that screws. There's so much there. that goes into it that it's like yeah. it's, you have to be out there. Like it just changes too frequently and drastically that. You Don't know. overthink it. Like at the end of the day, it's like catching striped bass on a you know big rock in the shore. It's the string. exact same thing. Yeah. It's just on a bigger scale. The Dom always tell me. It's a, it's just a big guppy. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> just a big guppy. You can't see your structure as well. Like you have to visualize more and and that sort of thing. And the more you're out there, the more you're able to visualize the bottom. But I think it'd be sick to get some like underwater ROV footage from like the from Middle Bank. Like oh, yeah. where like awesome. like underneath. If we were all sitting there someday, and then somebody like put a little submarine underneath all of us to see like you know, where the edge really is underneath our boats yeah, yeah. and like what it actually looks like down there where, you know, I just, I think that'd be, yeah. I don't know if it'd be necessarily helpful. Cause like we all know where we want to be or not, but it'd just be cool to know what's underneath you. Yeah. No, I agree. That'd be sweet. Hmm. We put a GoPro, we zip tied a GoPro to the anchor chain on plats. <laughs> that looked like a nightmare though. Oh no! I thought the one on Middle Bank with all the dogs. Oh, the middle, yeah. Oh my God! We've, so we've done it a couple of times. <laughs> like a we've done it a couple of times, but we did we zip tied it to the anchor on Platts, which was cool because like we were out sitting there for three days, but you know it only yeah. lasted two hours or whatever. We got it back, and the just massive piles of herring were coming through, and on the camera you could see them coming through, blowing bubbles. You'd be surprised and, at how clear it is down at two hundred feet. Really? Yeah, clear as day. And then we put one down on Middle Bank one time. That's also Platts. Platts is pretty clear yeah. for the most part. Right. Yeah, you get that You get that Platts ocean, clean, true ocean Platts water. water. Yeah. 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 And sometimes we've seen Platts be 72 degree blue water. Wow. Like blue water. Like med water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue, blue. But we put a GoPro on the bottom of Middle Bank one time. That was horrible. And it was <laughs> right? covered. It was all dogfish. And then in the camera, all of a sudden, there's this one haddock swimming along. Yeah. It looks, it looks, it's like a haddock, like, looked like a mice running through a herd of cats. Just get the fuck out of here. Like, like darting around. That was awesome. Uh, that's unbelievable. But that down there at 100 feet of water, whatever, is that's, no, it doesn't look as much different. The other one, a, a buddy of ours dives, and there's a, not the wrecks on, on Middle Bank. Maybe it is. No, it is Joe, right above there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a wreck that he dives on, and it's only in like 90 feet. And he was taking pictures when he was diving. The whole wreck was covered in mud hake. Huh. Interesting. And like all the sand bottom, those sand, you know, the sand ripples like you see at yeah. the beach, they're like four feet deep on Middle Bank. It's or, clear. The bank's clear. Wow. Like very clear. Speaking of clear, what's the furthest you've ever had a fish come up and eat a bait? Furthest? Oh, yeah. for off the bottom? Yeah, that you've seen streak up and eat a bait. Like how many feet? From the bottom up to your down rod. I had one on Southern Jeffries one time come out of like, came out of like 210 up to like 100. I, I, I watched him on the machine, yeah, something like that. I mean, I've seen plenty from 220 yeah. to 30 streak from the bottom up to 100, you know, yeah. 120. It's If they want it, they want it at the end of the day, I feel like. Hmm. PEI, when they're like, <clears throat> get full and they're all pinned to the bottom then all of a sudden they shoot up and eat the fucking kite bait and it's like someone dropped a car it's great yeah it's cool you want yeah. how you want how many on your kite bites here too it's like how many do streak up from the bottom and grab that that's yeah. what you'll, never yeah. you'll never you'll know you'll never know i think but. it's more than we think that eat like like a floater 30 40 50 feet with no weight yeah i guarantee you almost all those are just from the bottom coming up and i think there's some obviously run around up high but I think it's just a mixture of both for sure. Yeah. Especially like time of year, I guess. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're on the bank too. It's such a pinch point too. Yeah. It's like, you know, it doesn't take much. It's a couple of flaps of the tailings already up at 30, right. 40 feet. Yeah. 100 feet. Because I had, to speak of like December, this past December as well, because we were getting crushed by dogs. I couldn't believe how bad the dogs were Dude, this past December. Ridiculous. Like, I've never seen them that bad in December. But we were just getting crushed by dogs and we we're in 100 feet of water and just kept bringing the bait up higher and higher at, at, at the left. Like at the end of it, I was like, I had the bait, the down rod at like 50 feet. I was talking to Kyle. I was like, you think that's too shallow? I was like, no, if they want it, they'll come up and eat it. One, sure enough, one shot up and fucking crushed it. <laughs> it's all <laughs> set on. If they want it, like I said, they, if they're hungry, they're going to, yeah. especially that time of year. Yeah. You know, you get that right fish. It's, they don't care. They're going to yeah. grab it. 
I'd rather go up than down. Yeah. Personally. I'd rather <clears> go down <throat> if I can. Deeper. Slam dunk that shit. Yeah. Yeah, you like to be right in the thing's face. Less time if something's not right, it's less time to see him. Can't see it. I can think it's much <clears throat> less time to reaction. see him looking like, you know, you're giving him only one kick of the tail instead of six, right? It's just less time to turn around and grab it. This is a good topic. This is a good topic. So, so if you're seeing fish streak up to your 70 foot down rod, whatever, from say on middle bank, 100 feet of water, um, generally, and you're seeing him streak up and not eat it, are you bringing it higher or are you dropping it down? Streak out from the bottom? Yeah. Oh, I'm dropping it right down if I can. To the bottom? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Going down. Not going higher. What if the dogs are bad? You're just leaving it? Just leave it as, I'll fish as deep as I can. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what we do with the down rod. We fish as deep as we can, unless we're in the bay. Mm. But. The I'm not um, people say, I go sharks up, are bad. I go up like 10 feet. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I got to get them to kick a little more. But I don't know. I don't know. A lot of tuna. I think Southwest know. Corner, they like it <laughs> fucking deep. Oh, that's why I love it there. I love slamming a bait down there. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Uh, and I love that I can get away with it. Actually, last year was kind of tough, though. They were kind of, they were kind of bad, the dogs down there yeah. last year. Yeah. Dogs were kind of bad. That was yeah. the worst dog year last year. That I, I Middle think, Bank, yeah. like, Middle Bank Northern bad. Wall was fucking horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Mm. Yep. It was really For bad. For sure. The whole bank, right? Really. And there was, do- I mean, there was dogs. Mm. Dogs on Jeffries were bad for a while. Like the whole, the whole Gulf of Maine was riddled with the things for a while. Mm. And the tunas are like right fucking behind them. It was like all your that's, shit that's just gets so annoying. It's so annoying. And you're like, oh, but, the tunas are here uh, now. Yeah. God, it's, a, it's so weird. But I have noticed, happen. like, if yeah. you like, if the dogs are bad, maybe like on a slack or maybe on a certain tide, and then like the dogs like thin out. Like, oh, here come the fish. Yeah. Do you think the yeah, tunas right push the dogs out? Then oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Once you start marking, those dogs are out. I mean, they eat them. Yeah. No, I know. I just I don't, don't think they want to be around. I don't think they want to be around. Yeah. T-Rex is someone around, dude. I'd be yeah. out of there. Yeah. Well, they don't want to be around them. I will say new electron, like 10, 15 years ago in comparison to now, the ability to mark a single dogfish coming up on your yeah. down rod yeah. is an absolute game changer. Mm-hmm. That's oh, one yeah. thing on the Fortuna that sucks. Yeah, I mean, even, you the can, finder's good, but there's usually, definitely days you miss the dogs coming up. Yeah, a little boat you definitely are able to. Transducer is the biggest part of it. Yeah. yeah, you gotta have a good transducer. Yeah, yeah, the screen. I mean, any especially nowadays, but it's a good. Yeah, Garmin, Simrad, or Raymarine, whatever. Like the screen's a screen, but it depends on what you plug into the back of it. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's a huge part of it. But yeah, hey, that does it last year. It's like just days on middle banks, you're running out back. Nope, not because the fish was streaking out water. Because I rip it up because I saw the dogfish come out. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then they just come all the way to the surface. Yeah, and then you yeah, they'll come right out of the back they're... of the boat. Oh, I hate them so much. They're bad. If there's one thing in the social I get rid of, was a dog. Oh, ah, uh, actually, I don't know, maybe a pogey still. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope that like it's easier to catch them inshore on the pogies. It'd be nice to only have to go like three miles to. I hate yeah, the fact that they're in there home. this far now because yeah. of those pogies. I know. Yeah. yeah, we got our last few fish like six miles from home, which was sick. That's yeah, nice. it was so sick to have bait left over. Yeah, we were on like the first hour of the morning. Yep, yeah. cool. it was really good there for a month. Good, solid month. Yeah, and we had them there in August too. And they were there all the way through November. We didn't fish yeah. in November, but I know those guys like seeing giants like all out in front of Situate six to eight miles out just fucking schools of them on the butterfish yeah um scariest experience on the water oh i just finally had mine really yeah. this year Rest- uh, last year wow well not last year it's kind of fucked up that you've been waiting for it to happen i mean i've been in, i've been in, i've been in some <laughs> <laughs> Because I get to ask this question all the time, and I just never. When is my near death experience going to happen? <laughs> oh, I just had it. <laughs> I'm finally excited to tell about it. But uh, I mean, it's been in some hairy stuff, like wind wise and all that. Yeah. But it's just part of fishing, you know. Been stuck out at Georges and some nasty stuff and whatever those big blows, and yeah. when you shouldn't be out there. Yeah. But I had my first real hairy experience a couple years ago on the Southwest corner. Really? Yes. Um, it was just was it me? I was with Jeff Klein. Yeah. Me, uh, oh yeah, Charlie was there, Jeff was there, and a few else was there, and uh, had broke one off. It was a shitty out, 
and uh, broke one off, went back to the anchor, um, doubled up, and both fish went out and right to the bow of the boat. So I thought I had enough time to whip the boat around real quick and then release the anchor, but I must have gone too far and I didn't realize it. It got the poly wrapped up in the wheel. Ugh. In rough weather. In rough weather. Yeah. Uh, I was probably three to five, four to six is whatever. Close together. You know, it's pretty gross. There. It can get pretty nasty yeah. there. So it spun the boat around, all the way around, ass into it. Oh, fuck. So now I'm going up and down, and the waves are hitting the transom. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this is a problem. Yeah. And I'm watching these fish just screaming off. Yeah. One's going right off Jeff's bow. The other one's going, like, over here. And... uh one thing Dave always told me is like, and you ever run into like a situation like this, you know, grab a gaff, grab a knife, grab the sharpest knife you can, yeah, tape it to the gaff and try to see if you can saw it through it. So I thought of it instantly because Dave, safety, safety, yeah. you know him, mm -hmm. yeah. So he's, he's always drilling this stuff in my head, and uh, so I run inside and we had a brand new Victorinox. Yeah, right. So I grabbed the brand new Victorinox, taped it to the gaff. You know, as tight as I could, tight as I could. Right by this time, the fish is still screaming off. The waves going boom, <laughs> oh, boom off the transom. How line. rough was it? You think it was or at least three to five, four to sixes? Six six okay, sure, pretty close together. Yeah, that can sloppy southwest corner. Chop. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Of your scuppers are they open? Oh no, you got no. We, we no, they're four tie, feet above tie. water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that. I know that. But I'm just trying to think of your scuppers. No, we open. tie them down. Well, rubber band them down. Yeah, they can't. Right. They can't open. Yep. Yeah, you know. So. I get, I grab this and, uh, Jeff's, Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's sitting next to me, smoking a butt. He's like this. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, don't worry, I got this. I'm like, what the <laughs> yeah, right. Watch the rock. It's like, right. he's sitting there. I'm like, okay, so I grab it, I tape it together and I go down I'm, and I can feel the line on the gaff. And I'm like, I gotta be hitting it. I gotta be hitting him close. I can't break through. I can't break through. I'm like, shit, this isn't working. Like this is going to, this can get really ugly. And, uh, so finally I just, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try to break this off with a prop. And the line was so, I figured it's because the line was so tight, that poly was so tight and like the anchor was, everything was so tight. Right. It was, yeah. again, you're pushing on it. Yeah, pulling all, pull, yeah, yeah. of tension on it. It's like, if I turn this prop a couple of times, it's got to break it off. So I don't know if me hitting the line a little bit with it. Probably started it maybe. Started it. So I yeah. threw it in reverse real quick, forward and then reverse again and it popped. And luckily the bolt came back around. But Did you get him? Yes. We lost one, got one. Sick. Fuck. But that's like being handcuffed and then yes and that's that's that's, uh, that's like that's not that was my heart was towards waves is bad yeah yes yeah. yes that's tied a scary down. moment tied down tied to the bottom like wow there's the two, the two fish yeah. screaming off like you're trying to pay attention to everything that's going on you're like where's he going but at the same time you're like shit i hope he doesn't go this way because it's gonna be jeff yeah. But yeah. like this, I'm like, shit, I gotta I get this boat on yeah. angle. Yeah. What <laughs> amazes me is you tell that story, you tell that story, and this is how twisted we all are, right? We're thinking tells about that the story, fish. and he's talking about the fish. Yeah. Right? Like, if you think, like, some people probably be like, why are you worried about where the fish are going? <laughs> Because that's just you me. Just don't want to inconvenience Which, people. But here we yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Because that, that, then you'd feel like a real dick if, like, one of those sawed Jeff's anchor off. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. But what luckily, the one that was going, the one was way off Jeff's bow. I'm like, oh, God, that's going to definitely be in his anchor. Luckily, that one popped. And then we got the other one. Yeah. But, oh, we were we were limping home because it was still wrapped up in the wheel. Yeah. So I could feel it just grumbling along. How was it wrapped bad? Did you end up having to dive or did you yeah. have someone to dive? Yeah. yeah. Get the rest of it out. But that was... uh happens that was so my, fast. It happens. That's the thing. It happens so fast, especially yeah. when it's shitty out. Yeah. Like, that boat came around so quickly into it and i know i knew it i could feel it like as how i was spinning around i was like fuck yeah this poly's in the wheel i'm like this is this shit's really happening right now fuck yeah so that was like the real like heart pounding like luckily i kind of treated it pretty like yeah cool you don't seem like it seems like it takes you a lot to get like frazzled it does but that was one of them that yeah but like i said it's just thinking about the situation of what could possibly happen like you already think like yeah. have a game plan in yeah. your head of what you need to do to get out of that situation. Yeah. Worst comes worst. If I couldn't get that shit free, then I was going in the water in. and I was cutting that poly line and hoping for the best. Yeah. Or else we're going to sink the boat or in three to fives. Yeah. yeah. With the, you know, current going, bringing you under the boat. That's yeah. fucking tough. Yeah. Yep. 
So what that about was, you, Jordy? That was it. Actually, I just thought I, la, I guess it was two summers ago. I was seining with a buddy of mine who goes seining. and we get the seining net in the wheel, and it was like hoagie seining or yeah, yeah. And we went. And we made a set, and we we probably had them. We probably got fish in that set, but something happened at the end, and we missed him. And then uh, we went to because when you purse in that net has so much drag in the water when you purse in it actually sucks the boat yeah. into the middle of the net it's like dragging so to go yeah so to get <clears throat> to get out of it you gotta you know the corks like the whole nets around the stern of the boat and the bow so the net purses in in like a kidney shape and uh he went to back out and we had hauled in some corks and just gotten it around and then he was just going to kick the ass end around once or twice and and he went to back out of the scene and we weren't clear and he got it. He got the, the whole, like, <laughs> he got it and stalled, <laughs> stalled, stalled the motor right out. Oh. Low oil pressure alarm. It was like, damn it. And uh, it was getting, it was same thing. It was like getting, it was supposed to come up northeast that afternoon. And he's like, oh, this is pretty bad. So then we like scrambled to get, I'm trying, I'm standing on a ladder on the deck of a boat when in building, like it's like 10 or 12 knots at the time, but like the wind was kind of coming and I'm like trying to secure the power block so we can start sitting like standing on a ladder. And, Jesus uh, Christ. I mean, it wasn't, it just like, it, it could have been the same thing. Like it wasn't that bad, but it was, that felt pretty hairy. Like yeah. having a whole 75 fathom seine net stuck to the bottom of the boat in, in what was going to be an ugly building. Day. But, yeah. but we got it like looped around enough and we figured out and we got the net in the, most of the net in the boat. We weren't that. We were only three miles, four miles from where he keeps his boat. So we, he called a buddy and we got towed. But for a minute there, that was like, oh shit, that's scary. Yeah, well, you're so used to anticipating things all the time, right? You know, you get in a situation like that, you're already thinking worst case right. scenario as soon as it happens. Totally. And that like the saning thing's like new to me. Like, I've been, you know, I've I've done it a little bit, but there's a lot going on there. That's like a complicated. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that's like a complicated fishery. Um, and you know just the, the operation of the whole thing but um so but that was yeah that was there was a minute there where that was pretty hairy you never know it happens yeah, fast totally. when it does though yeah that success it's just it's a crazy part so it, it just it just happens and you you have to be ready if you're not ready for it then yep now you guys had the i was fishing with paul but you guys had the tugboat on jeffrey's that was pretty hairy that was uh yeah sitting i was spending the night over on south jeffrey's i think it was it was foggy you could see the tugboat coming down on us dave was trying to get to him Guy would never respond on 16. He had to like, he had to, we had to like run off the anchor before we got smoked by him. Wow. Wow. So you were going to get hit. I wasn't on the boat. So I was fishing. Everybody stay up at night. Yeah. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> no, that's attention. no joke. Yeah. Especially South Jeffries. That's like a high Southern, Southern Jeffries yeah. is bad. There's that's a lot dangerous. of tugboats and all the, even like the, uh, like some of the big tankers that like coming out of Boston or from New York going up, if they're going to Portsmouth, mm. They kind of cut that corner off right across Southern Jeffries there. Yep. Um, and Chad, like Chatham's no joke to stay, spend the night there. That you, you're better off to run inside and sit on the beach a little bit. Yeah. Yep. What else you got? You're next. Are you still lobstering? You lobstered too. I right? am. I actually just bought a new boat on Thursday. Did you? Just bought a 30 a for vessel? 30 for Young Brothers. Nice. Congrats. Wow. So we're back. Lobster.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, we had a we had a tough I had a tough go with it for a minute there, but uh you know, I bought my permit a couple of years ago and bought my first boat, which was a twenty six Seaway, which was still is a shit box. I love uh, that hull though. Yeah, nice hull. And it actually yeah. had it's got a keel on it. Yeah. Um somebody glassed a keel onto it at some point. But Sick. um I went to repower it and had an old tired Volvo in it. I learned a lot of things the hard way, but everyone will make a $20,000 mistake in their life, right? <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, the engine wouldn't fit and I had some issues with mechanics and things. And so I didn't do anything last year. I just left it sitting. I'm still trying to sell it right now. If anyone wants a project boat, <laughs> <laughs> call me. I have a project 26 Seaway with no motor in no it. No motor. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so just, just bought the Young Brothers last week it's that's always sitting over in Ipswich and 
so we're gonna we're gonna go again this year so i'm kind of i'm pretty psyched that's awesome so what do you like how does your life schedule work with that uh, I wake up every morning and do something, <laughs> whether it's yeah. going with him or so if you're not yeah. going on the closed then days then or when, the, you know, when, it cl- when inevitably when tuna fishing closes for two weeks at the end of August, yeah, you're lobster. I can go haul and yep. just keep grinding away. It's kind of a, you know, the TV shows in theory only got so many legs under it. Right. So mm-hmm. as that starts to wind down, that's kind of my long-term game yeah. plan. Yeah. Makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing I haven't really done. It's like, commercial lobstering yeah it's fun i've been going first time i went lobstering with my buddy was in 2014 i think and i've been fishing with him on and off and in here and there for years and then last not this winter last winter i lobstered with him we finished up like the cameras left and i pretty much went lobstering from august till middle of january with him and you know learned learned a lot there and so Let's see what goes. That's cool. Yeah. I have a good question. Yeah. <clears throat> if you could charter swap for your bucket list fish, where would you want to go and what would you want to catch? Ooh, I have two. Let's hear them. This is for everybody, too. Yeah. I want to catch one of those big black marlin. I think that Same-sies. would be pretty wild. Same Z's. Yeah. And yeah, one that of those would be cool. monster Allison's. Yeah. Yellowfin. Yeah. Those yeah. like 350. I like the yeah. Puerto Vallarta. They have both, right? They do. I'd like to do that trip. They got you know, two or 300 pound yellows and black marlin and shit. That'd be fun. That'd be sick. I'd like to go to Venice, yeah. Louisiana. That'd be cool. That would be cool. The oil rigs would be fun. Yeah. Be. Even the inshore there, yeah, savage, right. dude. Right. Yeah. I worked down there for a little while and got out a few times and that's a cool place. It's like, uh, it's got a little wanchies feel to it. Uh, yeah. I, doubt, I doubt yeah. that one. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. It's like the end of the earth to get out there. It is. But it's really, I guess it's really cool when you get there. It's really cool. I've driven through Louisiana and it was, I mean, it seemed cool, but even like where I went through and, you know, you get through Baton Rouge and there's signs. It's like Venice. Like, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. It's far. <laughs> Holy shit. It's freaking insane. And that's, I've talked to you guys before. I love tarpon fishing. Yeah. That's just, I mean that's amazing because there's like a little bit of like harpooning aspect in that you're like sight fishing and you're yeah. driving around looking for them but then i mean you know you hook one and it's that's yeah, just cool fun. it's light tackle big fish yeah i want to hear those gill plates rattle yeah you know i've heard i've heard about it you haven't fished them yet i've jumped two off yeah. i haven't caught one he caught one out of season yeah all right in november yeah there was like a random herd migrating fish and we just like had heard one. November's really down in Florida where we've talked about is like November. Yeah. They're eating, you they can, eat like huge mullets. Then. Yeah, you can catch them on like anything. Yeah. Supposedly. Black marlin is it for me though. Yeah. I'd like to do that. I want to do it in the that's, Great Barrier yeah. Reef. Though, yeah, that's exactly what I'd, I'd like to go to like three or four just insane lakes or ponds and catch just giant largemouth at the top water, like with frogs and lily and lily pads. I think you and Sandro should set this up. Dude, I'd right? I'd love to go bath off. Yeah. Absolutely. Just like somewhere like remote on a bass boat, Mexico. Drink, drink between like <laughs> seven and eight hundred beers. Dream, uh, dream trip. Yeah, yeah. We had you should have seen Sardar last summer. This family friend of mine calls me and he's like, "Hey, I got this guy in town, like friend of a friend. It's his cousin or something, and he wants to come down and meet you. He's a professional fisherman." And I was like, he's "Like, yeah, he's on the Bass Pro Tour." And I was like, I'll be there. I said, hold on. I'll get Sandro too. I, <laughs> <laughs> I call Sandro. Sandro comes down. I was like, Tuesday, come down the boat at like noontime. There's this guy on the Bass Pro Tour is going to come down. And Sandro's like, who is it? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> I tell him his name. Sandro's like, he's awesome. Sandro's like, I got his jersey he framed comes, in yeah, the right. red <laughs> Sandro, comes, Sandro comes down the dock like a kid. He threw me. He threw me a swim bait once. <laughs> Sandro comes down the dock like a kid going to a baseball game. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> was, that, was, that was actually really cool because like we were he was asking us a ton of questions and, and he was grilling him and like to, yeah. like to hear stuff about he you know yeah the stuff he does in the lakes and shit like that was that was pretty neat that was cool it's amazing how complex freshwater fishing is dude it's yeah crazy. for large mouth. it's not yeah. easy it's and like no, it's, i think it's as hard if hard, not harder than, harder than catching tunas on, yeah. a, hard, on a hard day yeah 100 yeah because like they're going out all day and they make it like six fish yeah. yeah, you know, six bites. They got Four five fish limit casts. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nuts. No, those guys, those guys, those guys have been doing it since they were like this big, time. right? Yeah. yeah. So right. like those top pros are like diehards. Dude, he's like, getting all amped up. Right oh, now. I love it. 
I love Sweet. it. We drove by a pond on the way down here. I was like, I'm going to go on Wednesday. I can't wait. Dude, I almost told you guys, like, we almost wanted to, like, schedule it so we could go to Oldham after we were done. Yeah. But one of, like, the best bass ponds is I know right that. there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we Rob, just podcasted we, with... Uh, Rob Taylor. Rob Taylor. He left, went down there. What did he get? Four fish over five pounds? Yeah. Come on. On yeah. swim baits, yeah. On swim baits. Yeah. And he found a deadhead buck that had either got hit by a car or hey, shot yeah. and died, like, alongside the pond. Yeah. Like, so you found a deadhead and caught four largemouth in, like, two hours. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> beer. I don't know if you know uh, Rob Taylor, but his beard is, like... I don't know, seven feet long. Yeah. It's like this big. <laughs> it has and, mysteries in it. Yeah, mysteries and <laughs> yeah. like luck and last week's caught fish with it. <laughs> yeah. So this is gonna air this podcast anywhere like July probably. June. 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 So everybody right, as we get started, yeah, tuna fish. He tells a story how he actually caught a fish with his beard. Made a fly out of his beard hair. Oh no shit. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Really yeah. cool. That's hilarious. Yeah, I love bass fishing. I don't know which one I like better, but tuna or bass. Do you bass fish Herring, by yourself? Herring fishing is your favorite. Yeah. yeah. My kayak. <laughs> I get a bass boat eventually. But. Just sabikiing herring is one of your pastimes? Oh, I love catching herring. Yeah. Oh, especially middle bank herring. Whew. Yeah. Actually, last year, you did have a little pep in your voice on the radio when you like went up on the high spot. Like I was putting around on the edge looking for bait and you came down from the north. You're like, oh you're like i just found the biggest herring ever like i could hear it in your voice like these must be really big which means herring. something because usually you can't hear them on the radio. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly weber oh. weber holly say what do you want low power <laughs> dude you are so quiet on the radio you are really quiet. that's why i text too <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i know yeah i usually in reach you guys yeah i don't oh yeah shit for service oh shit yeah. that's another tool that's another tool I would say is up there and like new tech that I think's made a big in-reach. difference. It is. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. There's been a couple of days that we've like in reached each other and moved mm-hmm. and caught fish because of it. Yeah. Yep. He had, I don't know. He's got like the offshore plan. He had service in Murray's one day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Wow. I do get, I get service. Yeah. I think that's like a you brand get yeah. Yeah. Service, of like service. Yeah. You know? AT&T. I like, that's why I have. That's like, weird. Works that's why it. I still have like a Nokia brick with snake on. I don't want to lose that service, <laughs> yeah. baby. <laughs> right <laughs> you should have decent service at middle bank decent like, good enough yeah know? we get them sometimes so it's hard to like middle bank's a black hole. i feel like when you want to, to text somebody middle bank you can't but yeah. then north you don't it's like ding, 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 north yeah, of the yeah. thumb yeah. nothing south like circle of death down yeah we have service yeah you know oh so any black marlin guides out there great barrier reef guys that want to take us you got four of us four Let's of us do it Oh God! That'd be awesome. I just want to see one. I, I want to like watch the shot, want, like the big shot, yes. it's like going away. Yeah. I want to see one. I want to see what it looks like when they eat one of those big dead baits. Yeah. Ugh. Like is like, like yeah. I can't even fish. imagine. Like you know what a a bluefin looks like eating a big bluefish, right? Like, on the troll, you know. Yeah. How whatever four or five six knots. I don't know how fast those guys are trolling, but it must be fucking slow insane. With the dead baits. I would assume. Yeah. Seeing one of those things, like those big thousand plus pounders come out of the water. Yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. That is wild shit. Yeah. And they I'd like to drive on one of those too. It'd be sick. They look so much bigger than those. Bigger it's than rough tools. there a lot yeah. too. They do look so much like bigger. Like some too. of those epic videos, like the high ca- high number days yeah. that those guys have, it's fucking rough. Yeah, it is. You know? It's perfect. It's cool. I think it'd be a cool experience posting up on the reef and spear fishing and catching your own bait. Yeah. It just seems like a really cool so we need a badass black marlin guy, black marlin slash yellowfin guy. And a glitter boat guy. Yeah. <laughs> we need a glitter boat, <laughs> badass bass fisherman. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to go anywhere unless it's all over like five pounds. I don't know. Literally. Yeah. That'd be nice. Oh, oh. right. It's got to be somebody with a stock pond somewhere that's just got all jumbo. You can rent out like lakes and ponds, like in places. You can rent a pond. Yeah. Like down south. Sounds like, this sounds like a alley. great idea. Yeah. yeah. You, should do you that. can rent them out. We had one charter. The kid was telling us he was on the, he went to college in the south somewhere. He was on the fishing team. Huh. That's well, in, in the, oh, they in do, the, do In the south, there's like yeah. collegiate bass fishing. Yeah. If I could go back in or, time, <laughs> I probably, <I> probably <laughs> would have done college bass fishing, to be honest Big with you. bass. Yeah. I probably would have done college bass fishing I can see if I go that. back in time. I can see that. I love it. It's so much fun. So much more thinking involved. Like figuring things out. And there's no radio, so they couldn't hear you ever. No. Yeah, I've never seen one of them talk on the radio. That's awful. I mean, they're on a pond, dude. 
Right. <laughs> I guess that was, just, that was really. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> It's was a really dumb statement. <laughs> They're on a pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, that's great. What is the what is the largest tuna that you have seen that you may or may not have caught? Mm. Will you pass me one of those beers while you think? Thank you. You guys ever had one like up to the boat that you're like, or you've had to release? So you definitely had some way bigger than definitely released some. Oh, yeah. We were like, that's, that's 700 dress. Like, we've yeah, released some jumbos. Yeah, like some slobs. No yeah. doubt about that. I feel like two years ago, those Two years ago, yeah. middle bank. Yeah. Two, two years ago, middle bank. You guys and us. Was yeah. Yeah. huge one. Yes. September. That, that was, was insane. That was the most ep- some of the most epic tuna yeah. fish I've ever like seen. Everything yeah. was one ten. Hundred percent. That was we were out with like three hundred one day jigging herring on the way home, just like reloading. Yeah, you couldn't jig. And herring. like we were, we were Mark. I had bait rod bandits in like three hundred. You couldn't, feet you, you, couldn't reel, you couldn't reel the herring up. <laughs> you couldn't reel the herring up. They just streak up and be like, boom, boom. I'm like what the fuck? I just want a herring for tomorrow. Just give me some fucking herring. Yeah, oh, shit. I don't. Well, we, I remember tuna. we had one at the end of the day. We had already caught four. Oh yeah. And we was like cranking up. He's taking the sinker off the last one. We're getting ready to go home. He's taking the sinker off the last rod, and he goes, son of a bitch. And he, <laughs> I see the line come out of his hand. He goes, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I go, sorry, guys. Like, I like, like the, dude, the guys were smoked. We'd already caught yeah. like four 110-inch. Like, like, I did not purposely mean to do this. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, God damn it, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> right out of my hand. Yeah, it's funny. One, like, one day in July last year. Was it July? OG and I and the one guy charter. On the corner. And we had catch and release one guy. Yeah. Catch oh, and release God. one guy. We had uh three eight hundred pounders oh, we were God. home at ten thirty in the morning. God. It was like two days before the commercial opening and I remember oh, really? remember you guys went up to the northeast corner, I think, and then all of a sudden the southwest corner turned on. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. But yeah, it was like right before that. Dude, the kid was Insane. smoked. I'd say his name was Nick. He was great. Dad. He's over seven feet, right? Yeah, he's a big dude. He's oh, God. seven feet tall. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he's like he's, <laughs> he's not probably not seven feet. But I would say he's. <laughs> I would huge. Nick correct us if we're wrong, but I would say he's six, he have raised the six five and dude. like a pretty built yeah. dude. He was like the guy for three yeah. tunas, and he was smoked. Yeah, I was smoked. We had one that we I had to dump the leader like four times, and he was like. I think I posted a video of it on Instagram when we actually like swimming him on the leader, but we'd already dumped it before that. I think it was fucking huge. But two years ago, when we were all catching those big fish on Middle Bank. That was so much fun. I mean, yeah. you, you never know. And like Marlin fishermen, I think are a little bit more sticklers about this, but I mean, we've seen some big ones. This thing was fucking big. Like I was like almost crying having to let it go, and it, and it was hooked perfect, and it wasn't that like bad of a fight, and thing was fine. Like don't get me wrong, but it was fucking huge. Yeah, we had a couple of those huge fucking. Fish. So these fish too is like they always look bigger on the boat. Yeah, so no. you can imagine oh, yeah. how big it yeah. was. Yeah, water. That's what we tell charters. You know, charters. You know, people who fish. It's always like you know the fish looks bigger in the water, and we always say like. These things actually look way bigger out of the water. Yeah. And that always rings true when we drag one in the door. Totally. The charter's like, oh my God. That blue, that dark blue top vanishes yeah. in the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You like yeah. cannot yeah. see it at yeah. all. Your eyes you know? don't recognize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The Jason stockfish was the biggest fish I've ever seen. It was 128 inches straight length on the side of Jamie's boat. In Canada. In Canada. The one down that we had down that I had that twelve hundred I had down the Cape was one twenty six. This was one twenty eight, oh. like on yeah. the hull straight tape. Like his fucking he came up when I had him on the, when I grabbed the leader for the first time, he was like pinwheel and then he did like one of those crazy Ivans. Like he was right. he wasn't hooked in the corner, he was like hooked like upper like upper jaw. And I'll never forget, like he like opened his mouth and was just like like Gil Gil Flair cough, and I was like almost scared. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that thing awesome. was big. That's cool. Pritch's fish was big. Yeah. On that stand up. Have you been? Up, I know you haven't been up there. Have you I been haven't up been there, up there either. No. It's I cool. like to see it's it worth one going day. once. Yeah, you know, one. I mean, day. you've you've seen you've seen it you've seen it all, but it's yeah. it's the atmosphere combined yeah. with that. Yeah. It's I want to I want to I want to hook them like around the gill nets and stuff like yeah. all that Dude, like craziness. Yeah. You know when you're like screwing around, like maybe after you have a few fish and you're like dragging them around each other and you're chatting, it's like that, but you're like you're fishing. I don't. That's, that's the only way I can explain it. Yeah, it's like you're both. You're just like you're literally like rail you're fucking, to rail, like, like you know, like, like a boat's like at the shed. 
and, and like that's floaters in between. I was going to say, I that's yeah, pictured them way closer than that. Like that's, oh, like metal bags, South West Corner? And like everyone's, <laughs> yes. everyone's got their own chum going. And it's that's just, on the flag. There's two boats between us. <laughs> yeah, literally. Literally. Dude, there's been some funny days. The Henry Island thing is, I think, the coolest experience up there. Yeah. It's not in PEI. It's off Nova Scotia, <clears throat> Port Hood. But it's like this island just off the coast. coast tiny. Tiny with this lighthouse on the top of right. it. And you're hooking fish and they're like, like in lo- like 30 feet away from like boulders that are coming yeah, off. That's like Maine. That's like, yeah. Yeah. That's like fishing yeah. the guys Maine's up in Squim last year. It's crazy. You're right off. Like, Was it Monhegan right too? Like, 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 like Monhegan and right there. up on yeah. Seguin last year. There. That's where you saw them like in the fog, like right against the things where like. Pretty wow. That's cool. Breaking them off in the rocks. Like, What are they getting them on up there? Is it all like squid and whiting? What are they? Uh, f- herring and squid. Herring and squid. Yeah. And it's like a night and morning. Do the herring come way in there like that? Oh yeah, all those yeah. humps and bumps. Like Either they have river herring on them, or they have herring on them, or yeah, they have bait on them. You know, hmm. it's cool. That's all. There's a lot. It's like a whole other fishery up there. Like there's a yeah. lot of humps and bumps. And like, that's like we went to the kettle, and if you look at the kettle on a chart, like even on Navionics on your phone, right? Like the most detailed chart there is. You don't really see like six hundred feet. You start dri- you it. start driving around, and your machine goes like this. That's it, crazy. It goes from like it wow. goes from like f- through two eighty to like you'll go off the edge like sixty two fathom, and then it comes right. And then there's another bump right there. Yeah, it's wild stuff. That's cool. Super wild, and it's not on the charts. No, you can't see the humps and bumps on the charts. Wow. And it's even high. I think the top of the. I mean, we were sitting in one seventy two hundred. No, we were deep. I think we were like you said. You can sit deep. There. You can sit like two fifty two seven two seventy five there and still hook them. But it's still it's it's. It's pretty cool. Is it like humps and bumps on a main contour, or is it like shoal side no, of it and deep side? Of it. It's just random. It's like yeah, yeah, it's, it's, random. Yeah, it's random. It's like random, like bumps checkered bumps bottom. Bumps. You know, gotcha. Hmm. It's pretty wild stuff, actually. That's cool. Yeah, they have a, they have a pretty sick fishery up there too. I've never fished up in Maine. I've been to the kettle a couple times. We we fished for a yeah, while there. Platts, we, we fished on Platts a lot a, for Bay. a while there. Platts was sweet. Yeah. You guys have a five fish day there. Yeah. yeah right place at the right time yeah so cool so the most of your well it's never been more than that a day right five a day yeah i want to no, say that that. we had five so we left gloucester at like mm, two o'clock in the afternoon maybe so we got up there at like sunset we got the first one at like probably 8 30 that night and then we get the next one at like six o'clock in the morning yeah sun up and then like eight o'clock and eleven o'clock or later. Dude, the shark later, was so brutal. The shark was, so, was bad. so bad too that Dude, there was like five I, you'd have to get a bait ready. Throwing herring in. You have to get your bait ready before you got to the anchor. As soon as you got hooked up the anchor, you had to fire it down to get the bait out because they were just swarming the boat, like That's blue insane. dog, just swarming the boat. <clears throat> if you actually watch the show, like you can see a blue dog swimming around with a tuna just streaking up and down. Hmm. Tuna was taking like the fire floater. That's cool. Like yeah, it's, it was wild. And then we like, got the so much fun. Two o'clock in the morning. So much fun. That was pretty epic stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, that was that was that was one hundred percent. You know, you, you eventually, you know, you do it enough, you get that right spot. You know, that you're there all alone, and there's just a pile of fish in there. You know, it's just, yeah. it happens. Eventually, happens. You know? Yeah. What's the bait like there? Is it kind of everything? <laughs> that was all herring. If the herring's there, it's there. And if the herring's there, there's probably fish there. Yeah. Yeah. Herring, herring, pollock, um, whiting, same stuff. Yeah. If you had to pick one bait up there. Any like you had, you only had one choice. Oh, you got to go with the herring. Yeah, you got to go with the herring. You have to. Although mackerel, the mackerel's fishy too. The mac- as much as I hate hooking them on mackerel, they're fishy. I'd say I'm fifty fifty. They're fishy. Also, just the ability to keep them alive longer yeah, and their totally. versatility in yeah. different spots no. and versatility for like drift versus anchor yeah. and shit yeah, like no, that. I agree. I agree. I like herrings unless there's critters, and then I hate herrings. You hate mackerel. I would rather. I hate just macro. Go I hate macro. I hate <laughs> macro. I, I agree. I, I agree. fucking hate I agree. macro. Totally. I, I hate macro I more than I hate pogies. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely hate pogies way more than I hate mackerel. <laughs> I like mac. No, I I do like mackerel. Catch a lot of fish with mackerel. They get bites. There's no doubt. They get about. a lot of bites. Whether you eat, catch them or not is. Yeah. At least you have a shot. You know. They're pretty good at keeping the slime off too. A little better than the herrings. Yeah. They're moving around a lot. Mm. But like, yeah. We learned a lot about fishing mackerel in Canada, like hook placement yeah. and like all those like all little tiny things. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. Even though Which they're netting, because they have netting bazillions of herring. Right. Like beautiful big herring. Yeah. They're they're so big. They're like the biggest yeah. one you've ever caught in the bank. Like share. Right. Right. Than that. Like What's funny is is they're not easy to catch on a sabiki up there. Yeah, they're hard. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like I would I would say most of the live herring bites I've got up there, we've taken them out of the gill net while we're hanging on it. Sure. And not caught on a yeah, sabiki. Yeah, just drifted them down like a And the like ones you chunk. catch on a sabiki aren't like row filled big females. They're all like thin belly they're all they're small right. baits, you know? No nice shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there is a weird thing that happens by us too with the herring that like, like why are they there so thick on the bank in what month is it? September maybe? In June this year. I a lot. No, I'm just saying there's like, I feel like it's September. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong month, but where you're marking shit tons of them and you know they're there and you're like snagging them every once in a while, but they will, you can uh, not get yeah, them to bite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I you don't, know, I don't know I don't if they're spawning that. or like. It's like a light switch too. It all of a sudden they start. I mean, you know when they're spawning, you yeah. grab them and instantly whatever comes out of right. them, you know. But it's yeah. like October, they're all thin. I just yeah. think they don't eat. Sometimes I just yeah, they just don't eat. You know, yeah. they're just not hungry. You know, and just, sometimes it's like the like the right at night or whatever, like they don't bite for a while and then like they just start biting and like it's dark still. It's night. Like they, nothing's, yeah. changed. Yeah. nothing's changed. Yeah. yeah, as far as we know. Yeah, it's like a tuna fish. You mark fifty in the den, and you're like, "Oh, this sucks." And all of a sudden, everybody goes off. Nobody gets a bite, and now everybody goes off. It's like, what the hell just changed? That's the other weird thing too. Is the last last couple of years, the herring on Middlebank were huge, and then the herring would go up to like Blue Hill, Southern Jeffries. They're like sardines. Yeah, but they definitely got bigger last year. Yeah, last year we got some nice. Herring. Even but the co- even the corner, like the middle bank herring mm-hmm. versus the corner, like there were days where there were nice ones. Yeah, but no, right? Even you're like totally two, right. Three years yeah, ago, totally there right. were jumbos on the on the corner. I yeah. couldn't get we couldn't get touched on a big herring down the southwest corner. Really? Even those middle bank herring. Yeah, you had to match the hatch. Oh, you got a bites. couple on the big ones. That day, but yeah, small. That ones. day that you were all horned up and found those big herrings up on the shoal. Yeah, and I brought them down. It was fucking insane. Oh, really? Yeah, they were there was a hundred thousand tunas there that day though. Yeah. Maybe not that many, but probably at least 100. That was a day that the trolling motor that everyone was laughing at initially was like, dude, that thing's savage. I can't wait until they make lock. one it's that's fucking been on down east boats. Well, they probably they kind of do. Dude, just being that's able to sick. slide with like a ball of herring that's like, you know, getting pushed up by fish like, you know, 10 feet more up onto the edge yeah. and being able to just like drift up on and then spot He was again. literally marking a ball like with a fish. I'd stay on the same locking. herring ball nice until shit. I got bait down and get nice bit yeah. on the fish. Yeah, nice shit. Yeah. that's pretty cool. It was really cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. That take a lot for a down east though. You it's need a, lot a couple. Power. You would need two. They do those big cat boats with two, like two like ninety inch. I was looking ones. the. Well, uh, you can get the sky hook. Yeah, but I think you need twin screws for yeah, that. You need yeah, to, you can't do it on a down east unless yeah. Yeah, they like have. Uh, I was looking at the the biggest trolling motor that's like one hundred and twenty pounds of thrust, which I don't know if two hundred and forty pounds is enough to hold. It could hold our boat on like a calm, beautiful day. Yeah, with right. Oh, yeah. Current, but two to threes, even on the center console, is when it's like marginal. And then yeah. if it's like, like it's 15 knots sustained, you're fine. But if there's gust of 20, you can't push right. it. It just gets too loud. It just starts yeah. to rev up way too yeah, it loud. It gets close to the surface. Yeah. It like, yeah. starts to cavitate a little right. bit. <clears throat> but the thing's fucking sweet. Yeah. That must be nice for you bass fishing in the river there and stuff. It is it must insane. Be a dream. The you gotta rock. get live scope on you. That's what we were talking about on the way down, actually. I know. On the trolling motor? Uh, yeah. 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 Like you the, do that the live scope. I think on I've it. seen that. Garmin. Yeah. Oh, that's what they have Garmin water, makes right? Yeah. It's like right oh, there yeah. with the screen. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. all the commercial bass fishing up by us on the beaches, like if you had live scope and just just troll through and scan it. Yeah. Like, oh. How deep is that scan? You have a difference. Like, you can adjust it. it. You can, you can shoot like it up. Sonar. Like yeah, you can shoot it up to, yeah. like, 100 feet, you know. But the further away you get, like, it's just like a regular transducer. The further away you get, like, the, your image is going to be as good. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're 80 feet away and you see a, those lo- like those logs, like, right. those 40-pounders, like, yeah. just, yeah, they're probably going to pick it up, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's a big fish. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I don't care why nobody's doing that. That'd be pretty Soon enough. sweet. Yeah, I'm there sure. There were a few good. guys. <clears throat> there were a few guys last year at Trolling Motors. That day in October, um, you had Bill. Yes. We both got fish. Yes. There was, I think there was two guys there. With Trolling Motors. Trolling Motors. Yeah, one of them almost. It was like just motor. outside of us. <laughs> we almost yeah. took the Trolling Motor off. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, they do, like, creatures are attracted to it, though. You had whales. Around. I had a Mickey whale on the boat for two and a half hours. I just saw a, a troll motor. Yeah, I just yeah. saw a video. Like, the thing was, I was like, 
I was like, up this is at, like the third podcast up at, we've like, talked about. Up at this, one of the whatever. wrecks, and this whale was probably like a mile to myself, south, and we watched the thing come up, and then he was belly rolling and around us. I have a video of it, like yeah, for yeah. two hours. But it sounds just like it's. A, it sounds like the freaking Dory voice from Finding Nemo. It's yeah. like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it sounds just like a whale. Yes. You know, do that again. I'm not. That's it. That's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me saying karaoke. Wait, hang on. Did you just say it sounds just like a whale? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> uh, uh, boys, we've what been. We, you got you got any anything final? Probably. This has been fucking Probably, awesome. I don't know. I love just being able to sit and talk mm. tuna fishing with people that are just as passionate slash yeah. more passionate. Roger that. Anything else? I think twisted is the word you wanted there. Twisted, correct. <laughs> I'm definitely twisted. <laughs> no yes. doubt about that. You have to be twisted. He drove last October there when we couldn't go the first couple days where the weather sucked. He he drove around all of Gloucester, Rockport, <laughs> both shorelines, south, northwest, east, and just did hot laps around the whole island. It's like where I was like, you should go up to Pigeon. Like I like sent him places that from fishing with other people that I know, little nooks and crannies that like have good views out. And he was like, where do I go up there? I said, go look out on Pigeon Cove and go look over here. And he called me like, nope, still looks shitty. I'm like, yeah, dude, my house is shaking. <laughs> I know it's still <laughs> shitty. <laughs> well, maybe it changed. I'm like, dude, it's been 20 minutes. <laughs> it's so fun. But we did get out. We did sneak out and we got one. That's right. On the, That's that right. Was, Sunday was the two, Monday, probably two, that was probably that Wednesday, right? It was this, yeah, that day, probably that following day Wednesday yeah. that week. Um, it was that was. I mean, it was wasn't hateful, but it was no. The, we definitely wasn't hateful, but it was no. It was, it was definitely shitty. It was probably shitty still, but I knew they were gonna be there. Yeah, like just had oh, to yeah. get out there. You know, I knew they were gonna eat after three days of Northeast in October, whatever, yeah. whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, they you should know, be there. Didn't take long. No. What's your favorite wind to fish on the bank? Oh God, it's a no-brainer. Northeast, <laughs> northeast, really? Northeast. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Everywhere, everywhere. I like northwest. Northeast, northeast, everywhere, everywhere. Huh? Northeast is hands down the fishiest wind. Interesting. Northwest can be good. I think northwest is good up, like north of us. Northwest the, the is flag. good. There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, northeast, south is probably because we don't fish northeast that much, like heavy northeast. But you get out of northeast is shitty. Yeah, yeah. You know, for us, it's not horrible. I feel like plus northeast, northeast for you to get to the bank and northeast for us to get there is fucking horrible. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You They're know? going straight. Yeah, uh, twenty five knots and thirty knots in northeast. Damn. Yeah, there's no way we'd be able to do that. And I mean, we can do open. that, but no. Oof. Yeah, you gotta go alone. The only good thing about <laughs> northeast it gets like bigger and rounder. It gets northeast is actually so like like lobster in the fall, like hauling in northwest is torture. Yeah, short. It's it's short. It's tight. It's snappy. Northwest like gets northeast gets bigger and like spreads out and like as you're hauling you kind of just roll through it. Yeah. But northwest is miserable. Not to mention like where where I lobster is, you're setting gear northwest to southeast so you're hauling into it all day long or you're setting up into it like you know northwest just tortures you yeah but northeast like spreads out and actually gets kind of nice to to lot to haul gear in i like northwest 20 at the bottom of falling tide yeah dead tunas <laughs> oh i got a question for you guys bass fishing inshore what's your favorite tide tide Ooh, striper fishing inshore fall. what's your favorite tide falling tide generally Early season, I like halfway, like the bottom half of the outgoing tide. Right, right. And Flush then everything out. Warmer water, too. Yeah. And then I like, <laughs> I like I getting there with an hour of incoming and right. then moving, waiting for it to, fishing, to turn around. Fishing one line yeah. through slack and then keeping them with you for the whole outgoing tide. You usually are able to pull out some. Yeah. It's usually like really good for like the top half of the incoming. Yeah. And then. Yeah slack you get them like under the boat if you can keep them going for like an hour and then and then the current's like ripping yeah but you can kind of pick away at them the whole out you can pick away at them at any tide yeah the river specifically though like if you're there on the change and you chum right on the change you can pretty much hold like yeah the whole school with you for that whole that whole second tide <clears throat> i feel like the outgoing you have to sh change spots yeah you know 
like the incoming you kind of just like always have fish i feel like i don't know it's weird sell when though when you and you and i were chatting a couple of years ago yeah dude poison i started straight, paying, straight, I started paying straight more, south is caca i started paying more attention to that so straight south on. is caca what is it so, what were we talking like about straight southerly, southerly. bass hate south wind yeah straight southerly south i think wind. everything hates i think the only tuna fish the only, is not good on a south wind either the yeah. only thing that i found good in south wind is light southeast in the afternoon when you're harpooning hmm. yeah like if you get real light southeast they it numbs them right up and they come up and plow right into it and that's why you end up 80 fucking miles from home because you chase them chase them into the southeast they're running into yeah. the southeast wind all afternoon and then the sun hits the horizon and you're 78 miles from home you're like god damn it it is sick though they do go, <laughs> they do get numb yeah they do get i wonder numb. why that is why do you think southeast they just plow into southeast like because that's so true southeast it just it feels like it kills the, the other tu- thing tuna bite when the I feel like they, yeah i feel like they all leave intro they and they all come leave intro and like they, all go, they all go southeast right they'll run right into the southeast fuzz all afternoon when the sun hits the horizon, they turn around and they plow right into the sun. Yeah. Hmm. This just goes to show you how much theory is involved because fucking Rob said the exact opposite. Rob. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. He was saying he, they like the sun on their back. Yeah. Right. That's but what that's until, his until I probably agree with that until the sun hits the horizon. Yeah. And then they're roaring back inside. That makes yeah. sense. I've, that's run, I've run on a bunch of bunches late. That have gone right into the sun. You can barely see them. Yeah, you can't see, can't see at them. all. Yeah, it's like half dark, but what sun there is left is right in your eyes. Yeah, and the glare sucks. You're like going on the bunch. It's like glasses on, glasses off. Like what's what works better? Yeah, yeah. And I'm almost driving over them. Like oh shit, that they are. <laughs> I don't know. There's theories about everything. Yeah, exactly. That's theories. what makes it fun, though. You know, what we all need to do start fishing more koi fish. Yeah, koi fish. <laughs> Stick koi at koi ninety. Fish. We got to nickname something. We nicknamed all the baits after the uh, Jersey Shore cast last oh, year. Oh, God. Yeah. What was it? Jay Wows were whitings. Jay Wows were whitings was the ugly mouth, right? <laughs> yeah. And then and then Snooky was... Herrings, wasn't it? No, those are uh, sh- Sammy's. Sammy Sweethearts. Sammy Sweethearts. Because right. they're decent looking. Yeah. Right? Sammy Sweetheart. And then we had... Uh, the Snookies were pogies? Were they po- I think a Snooky was a pogie. Was a pogie? Yeah. And then uh, who's the other chick? Well, you guys know we have our weird fucking who's what radio we codes. Yeah, but that helps. Like that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Snooky at ten, Snooky at thirteen. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know. We're gonna have those to write this down. We're gonna have to change all this though. We have to write this down. I think I'll the just best. Ask him. <laughs> I'll just ask him. He yeah. says, yeah. "What was it, a herring or a Sammy?" <laughs> I just like listening to dad talk about spots because like you remember four years ago, the day after we had that good day? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're there. And like you uh, oh, remember though. Right. Uh, now. Uh, yeah. He's kind of weird. Uh, that's great. <laughs> the, the, the weirdest he- thing is like there's times that like you'll be catch fish, catch fish, catch fish, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And he's like, I want to go here on Thursday. And you're like why the fuck we go excuse my language why are we going there on thursday we just caught a fish three days in a row in the same spot yeah but i think they're going here and i'm like how do you know they're going and we go there and you get fish right and then everybody then the spot you know have a slower you know not all the time yeah but there's times he does that and you're like he also has a theory that if you hook them on the latch on the lower jaw side, that they fight like pussies. And if they, you hook them in the actual like diamond of the latch, then they fight like normal. And if you then, hook them in the upper mouth, they fight like assholes. Yeah. Oh, they suck when they're hooked in the tip or yeah. the roof here. Yeah. yeah. It's annoying. Like, it like lower jaw. Yeah. He's like lower jaw. They're going to yeah. fight like pussies because they're getting their mouth fucking opened up over and yeah, over yeah. and over again. When you're in, the roof, in the roof, they suck. I agree with suck. that. Yeah. Anything up in here. Yeah. Pinwheels suck. Gets yeah. into a panel, gets out of a pinwheel. You're like, what? The-? Yeah. And it'll scare you too because if it's in the roof, it, a lot of times in the pinwheel, it'll come off the nose. And the, yeah. every, every pinwheel, the rod will do one I of hate, these yeah, every I turn. Hate too, when they come every out turn. of the water, it's, you see it there and they look at you and they go, like, guys, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you're like, oh, God. Oh, <laughs> it's especially worse when it's that. like June 28th and it's yeah. like 85 yeah. in your chair and you're like, yeah. like oh, oh, just, go, yeah, 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 go. that's when I might back up something like that. Because that's scary. Uh, you know. just hear that line. Go, king, king, Speaking of teeth, right I got a great theory. That you, uh, you may have heard this on one of the other ones, but uh, we think that they come in in June with bigger teeth than when they leave here. Like they migrate and their teeth 
grow grow and I like stay that. sharp and they don't yeah. eat as much and then they come here and they just all through the summer saw yeah. off everybody in june well yeah. you've seen them you know you've seen the mouths of like the big great big gnarly bottom bottom feeders yeah mm-hmm. you know they they're like missing round off like right. crackheads they get yeah. falling out and gumbies you think they wear down? down like they seem easier to catch and and you don't lose as many due to chafe offs like as the season goes on obviously the rough weather is another thing i think the season goes on i think they get True. fatter and lazier. fatter and lazier. yeah True. that's why the june fish yeah. june july fish can be a pain in the ass because they're like lean they're like they're yeah. they're yeah they're marathon runners yeah. they can just swim do you for see their teeth yeah. changing at all over the season or you think they're kind of all the same i don't know if i've noticed over the season definitely the bigger fish the teeth always seem more worn out yeah, yeah. but the you know the middle size stuff 85 95 I mean, I can that. I mean, I feel like the June hundred incher is like the worst fucking oh, nightmare. Oh god! Anything hundred plus in June, July is horrible. You can have it. Like <laughs> send me to a place where they're like eighty inches. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. That's deal what was always nice. Down. Plats. There's never great big fish on plats. I've heard of a couple, but like the average stuff on plats was eighty three to 90, 95. 95 on plats is like a jumbo. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had eight hundred there. We did. We did, yeah, the one that was eating the herring. <laughs> I know. Oh, that one, dude. That was that was a wild story. That was bizarre. I mean, that was bizarre. Yeah, but the we, average of what you catch on plats is oh, like yeah. eighty three to ninety two. Yeah, and they're tit fish. Yeah, we did have that great big. That was we so, just yeah we just tied one off. We got we back. Just to the tied end. one off. It was the first trip on the new boat. No, we bro- we broke we broke that trip. we broke that yeah, end right. east of the bank there. Uh, well, no, but first trip that we like gone to plats. Oh something. yeah, and. And we get out there. So we tied a fish up and Dave's out back. I was making dinner. What are you it's, making? It's dark. Uh, I don't know. Probably chicken or steak tips or okay. yeah, good stuff. Yeah. That was lovely. Yeah. Uh, and I was making dinner and Dave's like, you know, futzing around out back. He's like getting dead herring out of the live well. And he's throwing them over the side. And then all of a sudden he's like running around the deck, like losing his mind. And I was like, what? He goes, give me the, give me the harpoon. He's right here. He's right yeah. here. There's a free swim and 800 free pounder swimming eating chump. Jumbo. He's going to harpoon it. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? In the dark, on plats with the tide is roaring. <laughs> you don't have a zapper. You don't have anything. Are you absolutely crazy? Dark out. This, everything's going to be gone. The fish is going to be gone. The harpoon is going to be gone. Everything's going to be gone. Here's the hook. I'm going to hook a herring and I'm going to throw it out there. Okay. Okay. Throw the herring. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But he, he's a very smart guy. I would have thought the accident. exact same thing. <laughs> but so we oh, hook it. And I was actually, you, you talked about fish with a heart attack. I knew I, I knew there was, I couldn't wrap yeah, my brain. Yeah, that one did have a heart attack. Start. And so we hooked this fish, picked the downer up, just slaps like the, probably the ugliest dead herring ever on it. Just like takes out some line, like throws it as far as he can. The thing comes up and rolls on it. It was like Canada's. Yeah. It was sick. It was sick. Smokes it. Thing takes the largest run yeah. I've ever witnessed in my own, in my life. <laughs> Going, 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 and then like stopped. And then the line angle just kind of slowly going like this. And I'm backing up and I'm backing up and he's reeling and reeling and I'm backing up. And then now we're like straight up and down with him. Like no movement. The rod's not like doing this. Luckily like no came tail up beats. Ass end. Like no tail beats. Dead. And he must have floated around in the tide yeah. and ended up tail wrap. And finally, I mean, I, that rod was, that thing I had was that in the thing water. bellied over, like full, like. I was like, it's the obvious thing is dead. Like, no, there was no movement yeah. at all. And you could tell it was, it was, it was yeah. wrapped up in the tail. Like, but like, that was, yeah, we swimming around That's in the lights, eating, eating that. Dave was empty, them, getting the dead ones out of the yeah. live well. What are the chances? The was but there was a the sander working up. around. Yeah. So it was probably a fish that was just on that, just yeah. came to us and just happened to be, you know, opportunistic, like feeder like that. But yeah, yeah that was, that was, that wild. almost started horribly, but ended great. Dave, you were not was like, everyone, we're <laughs> I'm out. You lost decision making permission for the next 10 minutes. Oh, I'm in charge now. <laughs> I fucked up. Dude, that shit would have been gone so fast. He would have been like, I got him. And we would just sit there and watch. There goes the ball. There goes everything. Oh, Dreach had a harpoon a swordfish and missed it. He can harpoon those. Yeah, I would, like Wildcat. He missed it. And actually, come to find out, he when he passed the harpoon up to the bow, he put the harpoon through the outrigger lines. Oh, oh no! So it would have taken the whole basket and then the whole outrigger <laughs> fucking snapped <laughs> off and the ball went through. Uh, I've heard those things are dumb. Like if you go on them and you yeah. like you can yeah. throw it those he could, like he three times. Barn door missed. Drive around and sort like missed him. Pick it up. Okay, we'll go back. Like, I would yeah. love to be on a boat for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're yeah. slammers. Yeah, we had a buddy of mine got one on the on the northwest corner. 
Yeah. Four, three or four years ago. What about all those? All those. Was, all, all those was massive. Monstrous. Yeah, Jackson was, was huge on Southern Jeff. It was like that. Too. That it was, thing was huge. All those was huge. huge. Four something core. All yeah. those. Do the tail. That was up at Boone. Yeah. It was like massive. Dude, the like keels, massive. The yeah, heels on yeah, 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 the fucking trunk huge. right in front of the tail. Yeah. Huge. That caudal like, fin is like. Yeah. It's huge. wild. Like how narrow it yeah. gets, how wide it is. Huge. You're wondering how many are lost. I know. Oh, we oh, we always talk about that. Yeah. How many you think you've actually hooked? But Another lost. buddy, the, yeah. the, the, the the French boys when they had the Betsy G, yeah. they lost a jumbo at Southern on Southern Jeffries. They always oh, seem to come through those. Southern Jeffries, hmm. but not enough to really sit there and target them. But yeah, that would be so cool. I would that'd lose. be a blast. if we got one of them. If we had a fight at night and like got one, like got them in the lights and saw them, I'd lose my mind. I'm not sure I'd be able to finish the task at hand. We got a sword in. Uh, I forget what canyon we were fishing in the tournament. We got a sword pretty early in the night. <clears throat> this is similar to your Dave wanting to free harpoon that 800 pounder. Oh and uh, <laughs> we tail, tail roped them and, you know, things hanging there. And this like buck 50 Mako comes in like right with it. And Miles just grabs a fucking like six foot AFCO gaff. And he's like straight gaff. Yeah. I think we had the head off or no, we had the fish on deck. We had his head off. He's like, Throw the head on a fucking safety line. I'm like, all right, throw the head on the safety line. We already cut the bill off and shit. And he's trying to free gaff a fucking Mako. Oh, God, no. Like, that seems like the worst decision. <laughs> God, no. One could make. He missed it by like half an inch, dude. Yeah. I have it all on video. Thank fucking Christ he did. I jumped a Mako in the cove with Dave Krause. Did you? Yeah. Thing jumped like right over the bow of the boat. I was terrified. Dave Krause. Dude. The New Hampshire Wonder. Yeah. He actually I think he's built every night. type of home. He, I think he's done every, like every profession you can do. Yeah. He's done it. Yeah. He's at least tried it. Yeah. He's definitely a renaissance man. I That's like great. him a lot. He does some bass fishing. He does. Yeah. He's a sweet rig up he there. He goes to Champlain mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. yeah. I want to go to Champlain. <clears throat> that sounds good. Well, let's go eat some chili. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Do you guys want to give your social media accounts so if people want to get sl- said, no. slide into your dms <laughs> i mean like everyone knows you're on tv so how do people find you on social media if they want to uh, ask you a question or something just instagram tuna.sandro that's where i've used the most you know facebook yeah but i'm definitely more you know active on instagram more than anything same thing mine's g seuss 89 Sounds right. Is that like your AOL screen name? Yeah, right. Right. No, that was way worse. <laughs> My wife's MySpace was filthy blonde. <laughs> oh boy. Mike. And with that, and with that, we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna end this on OG's three words of fishing wisdom. <laughs> Just remember you can't catch if you don't have a hook on the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last one, you'll have to keep listening. Stay tight, everybody. Thanks, boys. That was sweet. Thank you guys. Thank you. That was awesome. That's good. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Sea Rose Fishing Podcast. If you would like more information about today's guest, our episode, and show sponsors, or if you want to order hats and apparel, please visit our website at seabrosfishing.com. You can also stay up to date on all the latest Seabros Fishing content and podcast episodes by following us on Instagram at Seabros Fishing. Finally, to book a trip with us through our family-run charter fishing company, please visit massbayguides.com or see our latest updates and fishing reports by following Mass Bay Guides on Instagram and Facebook.